the Chapel Hill landmark, the Bell Tower, located adjacent to Keenan Stadium. The Old Well Walk, a game day tradition where the Tar Heels arrive at the Old Well two and a half hours prior to kickoff. Their opponent, unbeaten at third ranked Miami, in the hunt for a sixth national championship, led by the most explosive kick returner in the country in Devin Hester. The Canes and Heels coming up next. Welcome to Keenan Stadium for tonight's ACC battle between unbeaten Miami and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. It's the second straight trip to the state of Carolina for the third ranked Hurricanes. Hi everybody with my broadcast partners, Coach Bill Curry and quarterback David Norrie. I'm Gary Bender. You know, guys, there's such a mystique about Miami football. They crank out all these number one draft picks. They are a team that's won more games than anybody in the last four years, and their goal every year is to win a national championship. Now, Bill, not only that, they're going for the 11th straight win, and their quarterback, Brock Berlin, is playing maybe the best of his career. Well, I think he is, and yet he is still an enigma. When you watch him play, as we did in last week's game against North Carolina State, he'll still just drop the ball with no prompting. He has trouble with the center quarterback exchange. He'll throw an interception, and then he proceeds, David, to throw five touchdown passes to run his record to 17-2. and two. I think he is the embodiment of the resiliency of this Miami team now. But then North Carolina's got their own resilient QB. Yeah, they do. I think Darian Durant really is the key to tonight's football game. North Carolina's probably going to be missing their top two tailbacks. They're not going to be able to line up and just run the ball on the Canes. Darian Durant is an old hand. He's a very good pocket passer. He holds 48 school records. He's going to have to have a huge night. They're going to have to be aggressive in their play calling on first and second down. And if he has a really big game, I think the Canes could be ripe for an upset. Well, Miami comes to Chapel Hill for the first time since 1963. One of seven unbeaten teams. It's the Heels going against the Canes. We'll be back with a start as the Tar Heels come on the field. Oh, what a setting we have. Welcome back to Chapel Hill. As we mentioned, tomorrow night is Halloween. There'll be 75,000 people on Franklin Street to celebrate the occasion as the Bell Tower, the landmark of this beautiful campus here at the University of North Carolina. So we're all set to go. Miami against North Carolina. Now let's join the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Alex Flanagan. Hi, Gary. Well, Miami may have found its rhythm on offense, but one North Carolina player is not impressed. Defensive back Gerald Sensabaugh gave Miami some great bulletin board material this week. Take a look at a few of the things he said. He called Miami's offense simple, saying that Brock Berlin is not the best quarterback, saying that he's all right. Well, in his pregame speech, North Carolina head coach John Bunting addressed his players about those comments for the first time. He told his players he likes them. He said he loves a player who can go out and he's not afraid to play the game. And Gary, he told his players, go out there tonight and back up Gerald Sensabaugh's comments. And that's what he intends to do himself after transferring from East Tennessee State. Here is John Bunning, 54 years old. In his fourth year, he's fighting for his job. Only eight wins in the last two plus seasons. Larry Coker, 56 in his fourth year. His record, an unbelievable 41 and three, has one national title. And he's won at least 10 games each year. He's a quiet type, easygoing demeanor. He's put his stamp of excellence on the program, a program that really reflects his values. Miami has won the toss. They have deferred. North Carolina will receive. And guys, I think one of the big stories tonight is whether North Carolina can establish a running game. Establish a running game and some kind of balance in their offense, David. Well, and, and to establish that run game, I think they're going to have to do it in a different way. I think they're going to have to throw the football to set up the run. And I think we're going to see a generous bit of passing on first and second down by Darian Durant. He's certainly the most capable player on this North Carolina offense. He's going to have to throw the ball brilliantly tonight if they have hopes of an upset. This North Carolina team had a week off, a bye week, and it came at a very good time because they got really beat up in the loss to Utah. They had 18 players nicked up. All, all of them have been able to return tonight. Miami, on the other hand, a, a team that just 
had to play some catch-up football against Louisville and coming back last week against North Carolina State. So they're just removed a few miles away from the venue of a week ago when they were playing North Carolina State in Raleigh. Brian Monroe will tee it up. And this is Mike Mason, who is their fastest wide receiver, a sophomore out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Ready to roll. Four and three is the series coming in. North Carolina with the advantage in the series. A kickoff by Monroe. Mason drifting back, got it at the goal line. Here he comes to the 10. And he's going to be tackled, spun back, stays on his feet, fights his way back to the 10, and down he goes at the 11, and there's a flag on the play. Great coverage that time. Glenn Cook comes down the field, a linebacker for Miami. Jeff Flanagan, our referee. A penalty against the Hurricanes. Okay, Darian Durant, the guy that uh, David was talking about, battling back from a sprained right elbow. He's thrown a touchdown pass in 30 of the last 36 games. Strong runner. He can break tackles, considered by many as one of the top five quarterbacks in Tar Heel history. They're going to re-kick this because of the penalty against Miami. So Durant, a key. On the kicking team, will penalize five yards and re-kick. One of the things that happens when you have a fragile football team, as North Carolina obviously is right now, is if something good can happen early, and starting from your own 10-yard line is not one of those things. So this is a this is really potentially a big break for the Tar Heels, getting a chance to maybe get better field position than they uh, originally had. John Bunning, he bleeds Carolina blue. He was an all-ACC linebacker for the Tar Heels. He's played and coached in a Super Bowl winning a Super Bowl with Dick Vermeil as a coach and played for Dick Vermeil when they lost to the Raiders in the Super Bowl. So they'll kick this one off from the 30-yard line. Monroe, the left footer, ready to go. Mason is back deep again for the Tar Heels. We'll start it all over. Monroe this time, it hits it to the 5, and this is going to be Dale Roberts. Roberts up to the 15, to the 20, 25, to the 30, 35, 40, and a much better return for North Carolina. Brian Monroe, who kicked off, was over there to make the tackle. Roberts, a freshman, a true freshman out of Tallahassee. Well, they decided to get Roberts involved offensively for this football team during the off week. Already known as a talented return guy for North Carolina. And that's what they needed here. It's going to be a a, very much a field position game in terms of how North Carolina can get to their play calling and the better field position you have the more you can lean on the pass. Arian Durant comes out at quarterback. His running back will be Chad Scott, a guy who transferred from the University of Kentucky a couple of years ago. Scott is number six. They're going to blow the play dead. Boy, we're off to a very shaky start in this game. Another penalty. Play a game. Number four. Five yards. Still first down. One thing to wow. keep in mind, guys, is North Carolina is the least penalized team in the ACC. Yeah, but I'm telling you that you give away your advantage when you come up first and 15. Just no excuse for starting the game this way. First and 15. The first play of the ball game, and your senior quarterback, basically a four-year starter, loses sight of the 25-second clock coming out of the huddle. Madison Hedgecock is the lead back, the fullback. Behind him is Scott. Hand off to Scott. First to the 40, the 45, 50. He's to the 45-yard line of Miami. A first down run. Kelly Jennings made the tackle. 16-yard pickup on the play. The Tar Heels off to a good start. Fullback Madison Hedgecock, number 44, recently moved from defensive end. Make some pay here. Watch the lead. On the linebacker, number 50, Robert Roger uh, McIntosh. Nice running by Chad Scott, a transfer from University of Kentucky. Yeah, North Carolina's missing Lewis and McGill, their top two backs. Chad Scott into the game. He's not a 20-carry a game back, doesn't have the durability, and they're worried about ball security, but he ripped through the Miami defense on that foot. 16-yard pickup and then a handoff up the middle. Roger McIntosh making the tack on Chad Scott. Here's the Bud Light starting lineup. You look at Scott. Hitchcock, who was a defensive end a year ago, now been put back at the fullback spot. Jesse Hawley plays for Roy Williams' basketball team. And up front, the best player is Jason Brown. We had a chance to visit with him. What an engaging young man. 
He is married. His uh, wife eventually is going to be an oral surgeon, and he is smart playing that pivot position. You have to be. Second down now, and nine yards to go. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Here's Durant back to throw, and he makes the connection inside the 40. As we take a look now at the Miami defense, we do have another penalty play. John Hamlet was the guy that made the catch, the sophomore out of Lynchburg, Virginia. It's going to be offside against Miami. This is a very similar start to last week's game between Miami and North Carolina State. Miami with a lot of mistakes early. Number six, defense. Five yards from the previous spot. We'll replay second down. But you got to think this has to give North Carolina some confidence. As you look defensively, Baraka Atkins, he can absolutely dominate a game. Kareem Brown getting the start because Antonio Thomas is out with a knee in that the linebacking court. Both Gooden and McIntosh are as good as anybody in the country. Antrell Roll, everybody knows about him. A lot of people feel he's the finest cornerback in college football. There he is, the senior, and he is uh, being talked about in the Heisman Trophy, among other things. Second down now, and the handoff to Scott, and Scott gets to the 35, and he's got another first down. The Rock Atkins on the stop, but it's another first down for UNC. Okay, this uh, Miami defense has struggled the last couple of games. Look at that, seven touchdown passes. And the points oh, have been man. They gave up over 500 yards to Louisville, 440 yards to NC State a week ago. Now, those are two pretty good offenses, but that's not Miami defense. And Coach Shannon, the uh, fine defensive coordinator, is concerned about it. And here come the Tar Heels with a nice drive to start this game. Yeah, Bill, this is not the same Miami defense that lined up and really catapulted this team to the national championship for Larry Coker in 2001. And teams have not only been, been gashing Miami with the run, they've had a lot of success. Louisville and North Carolina State, success in the passing game. Just a boatload of yards the last two ball games. Larry Coker said we're concerned about our defense. They've allowed 38 and 31 points in the last two games. And off, off to a good start. First down now. Durant on the play action. Throwing far side. Ball is up. A jump ball. And it's caught. And it's going to be in for the touchdown. Mike Mason goes high, brings it down. That's his first touchdown catch of the season. Thirty-five yards. We have pass interference, but of course they'll refuse that. That penalty will be declined. Well, David, you called it. The Miami woes against the passing game continue. And what you and I saw NC State do was mostly crossing routes. But this is a deep ball, a perfectly thrown ball, and a beautiful catch by Mason. That was Mason working against the All-American Antrell Roll. What a catch. I guess he's their fastest wide receiver, and he got down there in a hurry. Connor Barth is a true freshman out of Wilmington, North Carolina. They'll attempt the point after, out of the hold of Jared Hall. So North Carolina, the first series, they strike. And the point after, it's now 7 to nothing. And Heathen Stadium could not be happier with this beginning. Mason going high on the jump ball. Six points for the Tar Heels. And what confidence that should give them. Mike Mason is excited. His first touchdown catch of the season. 7 to nothing. North Carolina with the lead. And now an interesting moment. Devin Hester, the most dangerous return man in all of college football. And here's his quote. Any team that kicks to me is brave. So what will I they disagree. do tonight? I respectfully disagree. I think any team that kicks to Devin is dumb. Yeah, they're not real <laughs> smart. Dumb. <laughs> the guy is unbelievable. He is a great, great returner. I don't mean just regular great i mean double great he had a 100 yard kickoff return against north carolina state so here they come they're going to squib it up and it goes out of bounds so they'll have it at the 35 so that's a big penalty to pay for staying away from number four so here is the bud light starting lineup so we'll be bringing to you after we line it up as Three we now out of bounds picking team the ball will be placed in the 35 yard line first down John Bunning has to be pleased by the way it's going right now. Brock Berlin starting to silence his critics after tying the school record with five touchdown passes. 
very resilient. He told us his skin is thickening. He's handling being under a microscope better. And every day, Larry Coker said he comes to work with a smile. He's a tough guy, no question about that. And so he will start this from the 35-yard line. Quandrum Hill and Frank Gore are the running backs. Hill, the lead back, the fullback. Berlin is going to get to Gore. Gore is going to try to get the corner, and he's jammed up as he gets to the 39. Let's go back to the touchdown, guys. Well, taking a look at Mason. Now, he's just a sophomore, not very physical by roll, coming off the line of scrimmage. And what a play by Mason going up to get that football. you got to give credit to Duran on the throw as well. Watch Darian Durant, just a beautifully thrown football and the vertical jump and the way Mason can hang in the air, he looks like one of those Miami receivers. And that's a compliment. Second down and six again of four by Gore. You know the story about Gore, who's come back from two blown knees. Here is Berlin play action. Bootleg gets it out to his big tight end. That's Greg Olson. Olson to the 50 and then uh, across the 50 to the 48-yard line on the first down. And here's your Bud Light starting lineups. Let's take a look now at the Miami offense. We mentioned Gore. Oscar Parrish has had five touchdown catches in the last three games. Kevin Everett, along with Olsen, give their best tight end play ever. And up front, we've got to change. Derek Morse has the starting job because their starting guard, Tyler McMeans, is out with an knee injury. They call him the Tasmanian Devil. Morse, who's a redshirt freshman in that starting role. First down now at the 48 of Carolina. Same set in the backfield with Hill and Gore. Berlin, play action. Got a lot of time. Throws it. Looked like it might have been deflected. He tried to hit Hill, and it's incomplete. Let's go now defensively to the Tar Heels, a team that has struggled this year defensively. Up front, Seawright's a huge guy, a guy who continues to improve, rackly getting the starting call because Brown is out with injury. Hug Justice in the middle. Tommy Richardson, an ex-safety, and he flashes. You'll see a lot of him. And Alex was telling us about Gerald Zinsabaw, and, of course, I'm sure he's going to try to back up what he said earlier this week. Well, he's going to get a chance. <laughs> I can assure you that. A 60 minutes worth of chance. <laughs> Second down and 10 now for the Kings. Berlin, stepping up, throwing far side. The completion is made at the 32 to Roscoe Parrish. He goes out of bounds, and let's go to the studio, and here's Matt Weiner. And so after that completion just a moment ago, a first down completion of 19 yards, sets it up at the 32-yard line. Miami trying to answer. Parrish will come in motion from the near side of the field. Berlin gives to Gore. Gore hammers it forward. And he reaches the 27, and he goes down there. This Miami offense can hurt you so many ways, so many weapons. You see Hester is in there. They've lined him up now, fullback from time to time, trying to find ways to get him on the field. They really are. They had him at fullback last week on the first play of the game. They thought they could isolate him on a linebacker, and Coach Coker was disappointed because NC State was in a zone, and it didn't work. Second down now, six. As Berlin this time will go from the spread, four wide outs on the play, and a cluster to the near side is three. Here's Berlin, got time, surveys the field, throws up the field, wide open at the 10, and waltzing in for the touchdown is Lance Leggett. He is a true freshman. They call him the natural, and he just naturally caught that one and went 27 yards for a touchdown. How quickly these Hurricanes can strike. Leggett's only 178 pounds, six foot four out of Arlington, Texas. And the guy who's got a big, big future ahead of him. Complete bust in the secondary by North Carolina. Point after now. John Petty will add the point after a flag is thrown as Petty is able to hit it down the middle, but hold up. We'll see what the penalty flag's all about. Carolina seven, Miami seven. So the conference will go on. Everybody is retreated to the sidelines. Leggett with the touchdown catch was his third of the season. And here's the explanation. There is no foul for a legal substitution. The point stands. And so we are tied at 7 at the 1047 mark. Leggett, the guy who knotted it up with a 27-yard touchdown grab. Yeah, and Leggett's going to be up at the top of the screen right here, and he's just going to run an outcut, 
and the secondary for North Carolina is going to lose track of him. Jacoby Watkins, right here, the cornerback, he feels like he's going to have support over the top. He doesn't get it. That is a bust. And you can't make mistakes like that against the Hurricanes. Lance Leggett, even though he's a true freshman, he senses that there's a vacancy in the coverage, and he settles down in that outside zone. A perfect throw from Berlin, who is not starting off slowly tonight, and that's not good news for the Tar Heels. Well, we mentioned, uh, Bill, about how Berlin has been playing. 11 touchdown passes in the last three games. He uh, seemingly has really settled in. A guy who's been obviously under a lot of scrutiny, but... Uh, that was a very impressive drive. Well, he's used to that. I mean, he had scrutiny in high school. He was like the number one player in America at his position when he was recruited to the University of Florida. He won a game for Florida. One of his 17 wins in his 17-2 and two record was for the Florida Gators, ironically. Coached by Spurrier, and of course, he was involved in a battle for the starting position down in Gainesville with Rex Grossman. And there, that was a very contentious competition. And so he's now wearing the, the uniform of Miami. Going back deep now from this kickoff from Brian Monroe. It's going to be this time Tremaine Goddard and Dale Roberts. And Roberts going to haul it in. Make that Goddard. Goddard across the 15, dropped at the 18-yard line. Goddard a true freshman. And let's go back down to the sideline, and here's Alex Flanagan. Hey, Gary. Well, North Carolina coaches and players told us this week that they needed something good to happen to them early on offense. Well, that's just what happened with Mike Mason. It's given these players a lot of confidence here on the sideline. Larry Edwards, the linebacker, came over to Mason after he scored and told him, hey, they had been telling us all week long that Andrew Roll is a number one draft pick, and you just scored on him. Offensively, they've gained some confidence. Now their defensive backs will have to do the same, Gary. You know, it's interesting. Coaches said that Roll didn't play that well last week. He had trouble last week with the cross patterns of NC State. Jesse Holly now will go in motion. Durant has trouble with the snap. He's going to have to eat it. And uh, he's going to lose a yard back to the 16. And pretty good recovery that time by Miami getting on top of it. So Durant with some mechanical problems underneath center. Roger McIntosh on top of it. There's Jason Brown, the man we talked about, the senior out of Henderson, North Carolina. What a story he is. The real leader up front. And, Bill, I'd have to have you look at the replay, whether it's the quarterback or the center responsible. <laughs> well, if, without without really studying it, what you do as a coach is you put the responsibility on both of them. You just can't have that. You've got a veteran center, a veteran quarterback. There should be zero center quarterback exchanges for the year. I believe that. Don't you, David, the way you said it? Second do. down now in 11, and Chad Scott is going nowhere. He was dropped. And well, let's go back to Matt Weiner. Matt, to see very closely. Did you ever notice that? <laughs> I uh, like. He, he, there's a reason. Got a, he's got a thing about those LA teams. I know. There's another I, one out there too. I right? don't know. What's the other one? I pretty can't, exciting uh, ball club downtown Los Angeles. That's uh, that team looks like they're on a crash course for the national title game. Jackie Pumas has come in now at the tight end. Third down and 13. Durant running. Gets the ball up the field. And it's caught across the 30. And that is Jaworski Polak, who was a man who was the leading receiver in so many categories. Had 71 catches a year ago. He's a little guy, but he is so tough. Yes, he is. And this is a marvelous move by Darian Durant, number four, who is excellent on his feet. Thomas Carroll is clean on the stunt. And just a nice little throw to the big fella. Great big Jaworski Pollock weighs about 112 pounds and tough as nails. Well, he's about 170, but you're right. And that was a first down catch. And that was big because it was third down and about 13 to go. And what was so impressive about Pollock was his footwork along the sideline. If he doesn't get a foot down, and remember in college football, you can force a receiver out. And it's an incomplete pass if he doesn't get a foot down. Different rule than the NFL. Hedgecock to lead back in the eye ahead of Chad Scott. A first down to the 31 and a half yard line. We're tied at seven. Approaching nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. Durant gives to Scott. Trying to bounce outside. He's got the corner. 35, 40. He's got a first down. And I'll tell you, North Carolina early is able to run the football. Hey, tonight at midnight Eastern on ESPN, join Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May for all the news, notes, and highlights from today's games on College Game Day Final. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. 
Nice job of blocking on the corner. Boy, that Oklahoma Oklahoma State game was outstanding. Yeah, that was a was it ever? Game. Oklahoma State played their hearts out. And uh, look at this, Maryland wow. knocking off Florida State. We didn't know that as we came to the ballpark. Region's tough. It just about ends the Knowles BCS hopes right there. That's right. Here's the option. The pitch comes back to Scott. Scott this time will be dropped as he gets to the 47-yard line. But you look at this uh, North Carolina team this year. They have, in their three wins, guys, averaged 263 yards rushing. Well, they yep. have they have an impressive uh, bevy of backs. Unfortunately, the top two are out tonight. And Chad Scott has come in. Bill, I can't help but think that Miami read the articles. They knew the backs were down. And they don't look like they have the intensity. And I think Scott is, is surprising them early. Look what they've done in their losses. Dramatically different. Two yeah, they got three to in their losses. They play well in this stadium, if nowhere else. They're three and one at home and at night, as Larry Coker pointed out this week. Here's Durant being flushed out, throws near side, complete. Jesse Holly makes the catch. That's a first down, and Durant on target. Holly, a fast, improving wide receiver who plays with the Tar Heels basketball team. Well, Durant does a nice job here. He's going to lose his tight end on the right side. Right here, his tight end's gone to the ground. Bramette. So he goes to a second choice. Goes up to the next level. And great composure by Durant to make that throw to the outside. Boy, you're right, David. His poise is very good. The senior out of Florence, South Carolina. He gives up Scott. Scott's got a hold. Breaks a tackle. 40. He's to the 30. And drops at the 27 and a big burst by Scott. Marcus Maxey eventually caught up. The only problem they've had with Scott is staying healthy. Right now, he is staying effective. That's an 18-yard run on the play. And that left side, Brian Chacos and Charleston Gray are doing a great job of just knocking people off the ball for Miami. Big Jason Brown, the middle linebacker, gets stoned by Jason. And here comes Chad Scott. And I remember Chad Scott as a marvelous running back when he was at Kentucky. So I think everybody in the stadium is a little surprised by Chad so far tonight. Grant City, Florida is where he went to high school. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Durant on a bootleg, running to the near side. He's going to have to tuck it in and get out of bounds. Nobody cleared. That was a run-pass option. Eventually gets out at the 26. Kelly Jennings coming up from the cornerback spot, forcing the issue. Well, let's go down to Alex. Hey, you guys, Miami's playing without uh, safety Brandon Merriweather right now. Trainers are looking at him on the sidelines. Seems to be a shoulder problem. Uh, kind of looking at it. I'll get back to you as soon as we know a little bit more. All right, Alex, that means that Anthony Reddick, a true freshman, has replaced him at free safety, a guy who had an interception even though uh, kind of a questionable interception last week against North Carolina State. Now Vince Wilson is coming as running back, and he is a true freshman. He is number 24 out of Daytona Beach. And uh, movement of front flags everywhere. Well, and that looked like more trouble between Durant and Brown. And uh, these, these are two centers working together, Bill. Jason Brown made the mistake that time. Everybody moved. There were 10 guys in blue that moved, one that didn't. Jason ball, forgot the snap count. Ball start. 77 off. Five yards. Still second down. So the penalty was called on the first guy that the referee saw. But the center, Jason Brown, who is so bright and so impressive in every way, simply didn't snap the ball on the correct count. That's a bad feeling. If you've ever played center, it's a terrible feeling to be sitting there over the ball and everybody else is playing football. And usually what happens is you get drilled in the mouth. <laughs> I think Bill knows what he's talking about, I, don't you, David? Well, I, I, I do. Did it. I did it a time or two. Second and 14 now. Polak comes in motion. Here's Durant. He keeps Durant to the 20, to the 15, against the grain, to the 10, to the 6-yard line. First and goal, North Carolina. Beautiful fake that time. Great three over to make the tackle. That's a 24-yard scramble by the senior quarterback. Well, North Carolina all week long, they were looking at Louisville and North Carolina State and the ways that those offenses had success against Miami. Last week for North Carolina State, they went with a generous helping of quarterback draw and quarterback runs. And Durant steals a page from North Carolina State. Big play. Tenth play of the drive coming up. First and goal now. They'll mark it at the seven. Running back is Hedgecock. Now playing the tailback spot. Durant throws as he's hit. Ball's up. Incomplete. Trying to make the connection. On trial roll. Antrell roll over defending on the play. That time he was very equal to it. 
as an end result. No completion. Durant really had someone in his face as he released the ball, and there is a flag on the play. It's going to be pass interference offensively. Okay, yeah, that, that was pretty obvious. And, of course, everybody's going to act horrified on the North Carolina bench, but Jesse Holly did a little push. Coach Bunting, I know you don't like it, but that's what happened. Pass interference, number nine, offense. 15 yards in the previous spot. And that's a devastating penalty. 15 yards is a whole lot of difference in first down at the six and first down at the 21-yard line. Here we ought to be able to get a good shot. Well, by wow. golly, Rose should have been called for hand of the face mask. I, that is that is wow. really, really what a badly shame. officiated play. What right a there. shame that the officials missed that. That was a shot to the face. Wow, we're by rolling. Entrell Rowe, and he got a, not only did he get away with it, but they got the 15-yard penalty on the offense. Yeah, there wasn't any pass interference, but it could have been a face mask call or a 15-yard personal foul against Roll. So they're first and goal now from the 22. Delayed handoff this time to Scott, and he's not going anywhere. You look back at Roll, I mean, he's got to be a little bit feisty because he already gave up one touchdown catch, and he wasn't going to let it happen in almost the same area as the first touchdown. Well, Roll just... You know, he came up and his initial contact with the receiver was a right hand, boom, right to the face mask. Almost knocked his helmet off. And good thing that chin strap was in place and no contact at the end of the play. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with the play by the offensive receiver on that play as opposed to roll. Two time all biggies picked the senior out of Homestead, Florida. Chad Scott in the backfield, play action Durant, player pass, he completes it, it's Pollock, Pollock stays on his feet, gets inside the 25 to the 24, Kelly Jennings over to make the stop, Pollock last year had 71 catches. Let's go back to that pass interference. Holly has to be disappointed. The one thing Antrell Rowe is taught to do is to get a chuck on the receiver and get a shot in his chest. He's not intentionally hitting uh, Holly in the face, but he gets a piece of the face mask, and that's against the rules. You see that last part from that angle, though? He did get Rowe's face mask. Right before the ball arrived, there was some contact thrown by Holly with the left hand. Third and goal still at the 22-yard line. Durant from the spread, throwing near side ball up. Holly kicked the throw to the two-yard line. And again, some contact. Well, it wasn't just contact. There was a blue jersey just about pulled off by Antrell Roll. He just he just grabbed his shirt that time. This most assuredly should have been a flag on the defense. Oh, Holly's just shaking his head. I mean, once again, they're coming up. They're playing press coverage. Holly, nice job of running. Wow. You just can't grab a guy by the shirt and jerk him back from the football. And that was a very catchable ball. So Antrell getting away with a couple here early. And so coming in to attempt the field goal will be Connor Barth, the true freshman. Out of the hole of Hall. This will be a 39-yard attempt. The kick is up. It's no good. And he had missed only one field goal previously to tonight. Eight of nine. He hit a 50-yarder against North Carolina State, which is the longest by a freshman in Carolina history. But this time from 39, he can't find the mark. So a missed opportunity for North Carolina. Bunning tucking it over. His tie, team tied at seven. What a setting, the Bell Tower, as uh, right next to Keenan Stadium, we're tied at seven. Now, North Carolina has really dominated time of possession of this game, and yet they're uh, deadlocked at seven. Yeah. Well, one thing that they've got to do is take advantage of their opportunities, and they blew one right there along with the officials. So, from the 24-yard uh, line, that's where Miami will take over after the missed field goal of 39 yards. Brock Berlin at quarterback, and he's going to give up, and it's going to be Gore. Gore pounding it ahead, and to the 28, and let's go to the studio. This is a big, big upset. Second down now. Five yards to go for Miami. Berlin on a play action, throwing near side and trying to come back to the ball is going to be Akeem Jolla. Can't come up with it. It's incomplete. And so, it's going to bring up a third down. And Wait a minute. Are they going to give it to him? They gave it to him. He caught the ball. Let's look at this. At the 39-yard line, they're going to give him the reception. Yeah, that's a nice play by Jolla because that was not 
a well-thrown football by Berlin. And you go a week, back a week ago, five touchdown passes for Berlin. He started out that football in the, in the first half, throwing the ball erratically. And tonight he's had some good throws and some poor throws. Well, that's an 11-yard pickup, so that was a re outstanding play by Jala. There's a penalty flag as they're going to blow the play dead. Jala, a guy who, one of the many outstanding wide receivers out of New Orleans. A lot of flags early. Part of the snap. Ball start. Number eight. Offense. Five yards. Still first down. That'll back him up. It'll be first down now. 15 yards to go inside the 35-yard line. There's another one of their outstanding receivers, Jenkins, who the runner-up in the Big East in the 100 meters last year. He's a sophomore. I mean, they just... They have them in the droves, don't they? I didn't know they had any runner-ups. <laughs> I, 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 I thought they won all the hundreds everywhere they ran. First and 15 now with three and a half minutes left to go now in the first quarter. Berlin getting up, and this is going to be Andrew Johnson. And that's a surprise as Brian Rackley was there to uh, make the tackle. Rackley getting the starting call because of an injury. Malik Brown as... Uh, it's going to pick up two, and it'll bring up a second down and 13. That was a nice run-down stunt, a stunt by the Carolina front that uh, freed up Tommy Davis to make the hit in the hole. Second and 13. Inside, three minutes to go. Four wideouts. They have the trips formation, top of the field for Lynn, and he gets it back to Hill, the fullback. Climbs from Hill, and he's across the 50 to the 49-yard line, and that'll be a Miami first down. Pick up of 15 yards on the play. Be sure to join us tomorrow night on ESPN as our 19 consecutive days of football continues with Sunday Night Football. This week, two of the NFL's most storied franchises meet as Brian Urlacher and the Bears welcome the San Francisco 49ers to historic Soldier Field. Coverage begins with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. First down now at the 49-yard line. Hand off to Gore, and Gore is slammed back. One of the helmets coming off, Tommy Richardson. Now, we talked about Gore and how he has had to battle back from two blown knees. He began as a freshman. Many people thought he might be one of the greatest running backs in the history of the school. Look at the average he had his freshman year. Then he tore his right ACL. Then he tore his left ACL. And here in 2004, still at about a mid-90% health wise. Yeah, but he came back a lot quicker than a lot of people figured and played so prominently into the, the big win to open up the season against Florida State. He was good enough to keep Willis McGahee on the bench a lot of the time when he's a freshman. Second down, nine now. Berlin double pumping and can't make the connection. Double coverage that time. Kevin Everett, the intended receiver. Let's go down to Alex. Hey, Gary, will you guys talk about Frank Gore? You know, it was never a question for Frank as to whether or not he could play football at a big-time program. I spoke to him during the week. He told me what was a huge challenge for him as to whether or not he could make it through college. Before he came to Miami, he told Larry Cook that the main thing for him was to graduate, and Frank Gore is expecting to do that in May, which he told me is a huge accomplishment. He said he just wanted to prove to people that he could actually do it, Gary. Alex, he's considered the heart and soul of the offense. You'd understand why with that kind of an attitude. The crowd is into it now in a third and nine. Berlin over the middle, and it's cut by Moss. Severus Moss, he's still on his feet to the 30 to the 25. Boy, did he come across in a hurry since the ball made the tackle, and let's go to Matt Weiner. Wow. We had some unbelievable games today. And there's one of them, as Matt was just indicating. So that first down now to Moss, covering 22 yards, sets it up now to 27-yard line of North Carolina. Berlin comes out throwing cut, and it's caught by Roscoe Parrish, and he's in. Touchdown, Miami. Parrish coming up with his sixth touchdown catch of the season, a 26-yarder, and Miami has the lead for the first time in this football game. Now Cedric Holt gambled and lost. At cornerback. Offside. There's a flag. 75. Defense. Penalty is supplied. Touchdown. Well, the first thing we saw in the last two plays is North Carolina's propensity to give up first downs. They've given up 44.4% first downs in third down situations this year. That is not a good number. And then we saw a gamble by Cedric Holt, which gave up the touchdown. 
can't do that against these guys. Roscoe Parrish, the guy who they say has the biggest heart on the football team. And Brock Berlin calls him my little buddy, and his little buddy just made a play. As an end result, Miami with the lead 14 to 7 as Parrish takes it in for six. Head basketball coach in North Carolina, Roy Williams, in his second year, of course, uh, did such an outstanding job at the University of Kansas. A lot of people don't know, he was on the bench in 1982 when Dean Smith won his first national championship. You know, hit that shot, a freshman by the name of Michael Jordan. Pretty good player. Not bad. But what was his support? <laughs> Anything he wanted to be, I oh. guess. All right, kicking off is Monroe, and he hits it deep. Roberts going over the corner. He'll make it in for the touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Let's, let's go back to the touchdown. Yeah, you know, Texas Hold'em has become pretty popular across the country, and sometimes football is a bit of a poker game. Cedric Holt gets caught gambling, goes for the interception, and Parrish makes him pay for it. The flip side of this is Roscoe Parrish from Berlin trust so implicitly has to focus on the football here their hand almost gets in there it's easy to drop that ball and be distracted by that flash of blue out of the left side Roscoe makes the catch and takes it in and this is what North Carolina cannot afford is to let Miami run up and down the field and score on every position possession obviously North Carolina trailing for the first time they'll start from the 20 yard line here is a handoff now fake handoff by Durant he faked it to his freshman running back Wilson Gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Let's go to Matt. Wow, wow the Spartans getting after him in the big house. Yes, they are. The Wolverines tie that, that game at 37. They're going to have to go to two-point conversions. That's right. On the third overtime, you're forced to do that. So no gain on the last play. Second and 10. Durant is back over the middle, and it's going to be separated from him. Polak. He tried to go up, and we mentioned he's only 170 pounds, and he took a shot. And uh, I'm going to give credit to Three. Three, the strong safety who separated him from the football. Yeah, Greg Three is the guy in the secondary for Miami. You can test in the passing game, but if you play the game in tight spaces, he's going to come up and give you a big lick. And that time he timed it perfectly on Polak. I'll tell you what, uh, Freed is the guy who has two interceptions and maybe the hardest worker they have on their football team. Third down now, 10. North Carolina needs something going here. Durant, they had nothing doing at the 32. Mason, the intended receiver, but really didn't have any chance at all. And now, you know what that means? The guy that our crew named anytime, Devin Hester, will come in for the punt. Anytime Hester. <laughs> That's a great name. As opposed anytime to prime you time. kick it to him. You wish you didn't. I'd kick it out of bounds. I, no way would I let him have a normal punt. And they worked on it vigorously Thursday with their punter to kick the ball out of bounds. He's had three punt returns for touchdowns, one kickoff return. David Woolrich the punt away, trying to punt it away from him. And that's what happens. You said this, Bill. Yep. It affects your punting. A very poor punt as they try to keep it away from Hester. And I'll tell you what. It's awfully hard, isn't it, when you're just trying to punt the football and then you're talking about being directional as well. And that's not an easy thing to do as an end result. That ends up being um, a not a good punt. And so as an end result, John Bunning's team now not with good field position. No, and, and what, what a guy like Hester does, and there's no place to keep these records, he affects field position so drastically that won't appear in any number, but that just took about 30 yards away from the field position for North Carolina. Yeah, if you're going to angle the ball out of bounds, and if you're in your own end, you're really only going to get off 30 yards of net difference in field position. Now you got Brock Berlin at midfield again, working with a short field. A short field is exactly what it is after that punt. And here's a handoff to Parrish coming around and in around, and he's able to bounce forward to the 40. So a 22-yard punt as an end result. North Carolina now will set up defensively there into the field. Gary, I just Hester, wanna... you don't have that. That doesn't go into the stats at all, but that altered punt is huge, and there's no way you can track it saying how effective any time Hester is. When we get back from this break, I want to get back to that. We have played a quarter. Miami on top, 14-7. to seven.
Three athletes that helped shape their respective sports got their start here in Chapel Hill. Mia Hamm, of course, in soccer. We talked about Michael Jordan. That's the shot that won it at 82 against Georgetown. And LT, Lawrence Taylor. You talk about a guy that changed the linebacking position. LT did that. Well, believe it or not, there were a couple of pretty good players before him. I mean, everybody talks about he changed the position, but how about David Robinson, the Hall of Famer yeah. from the Green Bay Packers? He wasn't too shabby. How about Mike Curtis of the Baltimore Colts when he played outside backer? I don't know how much LT changed it, but he was a great player. Oh, he was outstanding, and you're going back to your vintage, and I remember those guys, Bill, very well. Curtis with the Colts, of course, and Robinson with the Packers. Here we go now. We start this second quarter. It's going to be second down seven for Miami. Berlin over the middle. Can't connect with Greg Olson. He's tied in. And let's go to the studio. I tell you, that's compelling television, isn't it? 111,000 people make it even more compelling. Third down and seven now for the Hurricanes. 14-7. Miami with the lead. Just underway. Second quarter. Berlin from the gun. He has three wideouts. He's going to give on the ball back to Gore, and Gore bounces forward. He's not going to get the first down. He's going to be short by a couple of yards. Jonas Seawright, a big 300-plus defensive tackle out of Orangeburg, South Carolina, made the stop. I think what Larry Coker decided was to take two downs to make the first down here. And had he gained a couple more inches or a couple more yards there, they would have gone ahead and run it for the fourth down. Now, they, they used a beautiful fake punt against NC State a week ago. It's a trap, and they snapped the ball to Quatrine Hill, who's the fullback on the punt. I don't know that they would use it again, but North Carolina is up, up there looking for it. Yep, they don't even have anybody back for the punt as Brian Moreau hits it. He hit it too far. It'll go into the end zone for the touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Time now for our Yamaha game track. Let's take a look at the touchdown. Starting out, Durant hitting Mike Mason on a jump ball. That was good to make it 35 yards. And then Berlin came back and hit his true freshman, Lance Leggett, from 27 yards out to tie it up at seven. After a missed 39-yard field goal, Berlin then to Roscoe Parrish. And at the 112 mark of the first quarter, 14-7 Miami. That just underscores how Miami can come back on you in a hurry. And North Carolina jumps out to a 7-0 lead. Then they have first and goal inside the 10. But they're trailing by seven. So now a handoff comes to big Madison Hitchcock. They call him Mad Dog. I mean, this is a guy who will run over people. We have documented he was a defensive end a year ago after starting out as a fullback at North Carolina. He's done a great job for him in a variety of positions. Let's finish our discussion of the field position because with Miami starting about the 45-yard line on their previous drive, that was a big, big stop for North Carolina's defense. They've had so much trouble stopping productive offenses. And when you do that and get the ball back, it's huge for morale and for your own field position. You can see the field position you're talking about thus far in the ballgame. Durant throwing under pressure and could not make the connection. He is dumped back at the 12-yard line, tried to hit Mike Mason, but he just didn't have time. Well, Miami's known for playing press coverage on the outside. They're going to be physical with the receivers. They interrupt the releases, and that creates time for this defensive front to get to the quarterback. That time, they're bringing a blitz, Gooden, and three from the strong safety position. And I think that Durant's going to see pressure all night until his wide receivers can give him some better looks down the field. And Durant, we have talked about, has to play as well as he's ever played this football game. But North Carolina's going to win this one. Coming off of an elbow injury against Utah, having trouble gripping the ball early in the week, but he's okay now. Durant stepping up this time. Over the middle. He makes a connection to the 35, to the 38-yard line. That's Jesse Holly, And Holly has really been a thorn in Miami's side. They're having a tough time trying to cover him. Here's what's been happening really all night. Good job. Anytime Miami tries to rush with four, the offensive line for the Tar Heels does a nice job of protection. Now, Durant gets hit late here just as he's throwing the ball, but he has plenty of time to get set up. Watch the big guys up front. Put their hands, move their feet. Nice job. He's hit late, but the ball is off. Nice completion. They have a man shaking up for Miami. Javon Manton has been shaken up. 
on the play. He is coming out of the ball game. Here's a pass. It's complete to the tight end, John Hammer. And he is knocked off his feet at the 48-yard line. They don't throw that off into their tight end, but Hamlin coming up with his sixth catch of the year, the sophomore, and they're going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. Well, Duran is really one of the underrated quarterbacks in the country. You don't hear a lot about him, but if you give him an open receiver down the football field, he's going to hit that receiver. I mean, he's not playing with the talent around him, but he's already made some great throws in the first half. And he's a quarterback that's capable of loosening up this Miami secondary. I don't think the Miami secondary is ready for this type of accuracy from Durant. Thus far, North Carolina hanging tough. Second down, they get a yard to go. As Durant will follow him back to the hole, and he got the first down to the 49. Welcome to one of the great settings in college football, Keenan Stadium on the campus of the University of North Carolina with Bill Curry, David Norrie, and Alex Flanagan. I'm Gary Bender. Early, North Carolina had a 7-0 lead. Then it was tied at 7. Miami took the lead. We've had some big plays, but thus far, the Tar Heels are hanging tough at home. Got to mark the ball at the 49. It'll be a first down. Hedgecock and Ricky Cook, who's a transfer from Rutgers. Two fullbacks, actually. Hedgecock now playing out of the tailback spot. Here is Hedgecock trying to get the corner. Now pins it up against the grain and gets to the 45-yard line. Tavares Gooden there to make the tackle. We talked about the pass protection for the North Carolina offensive line, but they've been blocking well for the run. Here's Chad Scott, number six, in the open field. Popped into the open by nice blocking. Guy Ralph, Willie McNeil, staying on their feet, knocking back those powerful Miami defensive linemen, which really makes it much easier to pass protect. Gain of four, second down six. Durant gets the head cut again at 44, bounces it forward, gets to the 43. He'll be about two, maybe three yards short of the first down. Orion Harris, their most experienced defensive lineman from Newark, Delaware, made the tackle that time for Miami. Big Jason Brown we talked about earlier. Watch the center now. He's going to pull around here, something that center's only re recently started doing. Look at his agility. Look at the power. That's a 750 squatter there that's hitting Leon Williams and burying him. I can only imagine if they would have let you get up and pull like that, you know, back in the, in the 60s, Bill. I was, a, I was afraid to do that. Bill, how much were you? How, how big were you? I was a massive 242 at my biggest. <laughs> only about 100 pounds less than Jason. Great feet, though. It is Durant back to throw in the middle of the connections made, but it's going to be short of the first down. Nice catch by Pole. Oh, I had fear on my side. <laughs> so it's going to be a fourth down and still about a yard to go. And, of course, the crowd now is wanting them to go for it. So and North, they are. North Carolina's not going to win this game by being cautious. They're going to have to do things like this. They've got that quarter of a ton backfield with those two monsters with Hedgecock and who's the other guy? Ricky, Ricky Cook. Cook, yeah. Pound it up in there and make the first down. Now, so, when you're John Bunny and you're facing pressure on your job here, you're not going to make a lot of friends with your fans if you don't go. Fourth down in a yard, so they're going to take this gamble at the 9.43 mark of the second quarter. Heads back, he's going to get it. He's got more. Look at the leg drive as he takes it inside the 30 to the 29. Roll to make the tackle. 12-yard pickup. Cook the fullback with a very good block that time for Hitchcock. Ricky Cook leading the way for Hedgecock up into the hole. Two big backs. Hedgecock, nice job of securing the handoff. And look at Cook clearing the way, number 40. Two big bruisers playing physical football at the running back position. Bruiser's a good word, David. They call this Hedgecock a tough country football player. And Bunny just said if we had more like him, we would be in great shape. And here's an end around. Take hand up the middle and running with the ball is Chad Scott very well faked by Durant it's close to another first down and let's go back to Matt Weiner wow <laughs> keep us updated that is something special taking place in the Big Ten and it's going to bring up second down a yard to go now for North Carolina Scott the single running back we're going to have Hedgecock come in motion hand to Scott Scott's trying to get the corner he will not and it's going to be a third down. Brandon Merriweather, who Alex pointed out earlier, was shaken up, is back in, made the tackle. There is a flag. Let's see what this is all about. Uh, how about the speed from the free safety position by Merriweather? 
An offside penalty against Miami. Yeah, it looked like that play was going to work, didn't it? Number 92. Five yards to pretty good spot. The replay second down. But the Miami defensive speed really paid off, but the penalty then offsets that play. Let's remember how this happened. Miami had field position inside. Good gracious. <laughs> the Ram doesn't seem too concerned about anything. Somebody got a hold of his horns with some nail polish there, but Miami had field position inside the 50-yard line. The defense for North Carolina held, and this offense has knocked the ball down the field. It's been a beautiful drive. They must cash in. So now they have the first down. Look at the rushing yardage. 107 yards by the Tar Heels. And when they rush well, they win football games. And about coming to Scott. Scott inside the 10. To the 5. Touchdown, North Carolina. Chad Scott, the third string tailback, and he has stepped up big here tonight. 14-yard run, and now going for the tie will be Bart, Connor Bart, to attempt the point effort. So North Carolina has answered. And Bart's kick is on the way, and we're tied again. 14 all at the 8-09 mark of the second quarter. Chad Scott. Able to take it in from 14 yards away. Chad Scott capping an 80-yard drive in 11 plays. 5.59 on that drive. Scott with his third touchdown of the day, and he has stepped up big time as he is a guy who we mentioned replacing the injured Jock Lewis, Ronnie McGill, and with a touchdown now, he has 10 carries, 73 yards. And Barth kicks it along the ground to keep it away from Hester. The up man takes it to the 35 and to the 37-yard line. That'll be John Beeson, a backup linebacker. 13-yard return, so they keep the strategy going. Keep it away from Hester. Here's what you need to see about Chad Scott. He's making these fine defensive backs miss. Every time he carries the football and gets into the secondary, he's beating people like Brandon Merriweather and Antrell Rowe. That's hard to do. Yeah, and on the season, he's averaging over six yards a carry, so he's not an unknown. Best performance as a Tar Heel was in the opener against William Mary, 75 yards. He's only two yards away from his best effort here in Chapel Hill. Again, he's got to stay healthy. He's had a history of getting nicked up as game goes along. He was out of the North Carolina State with an ankle injury. Tyrone Moss is shut down and loses a half yard. Gerald Sensabaugh, the man who talked about Miami's offense being so simple. And as they said, he will try to back up his talk with his play. Gerald Sensabaugh, the safety man coming off the corner. Number 14 is the guy who did the talking. Now he's doing the walking. Yes, he is. He is out of East Tennessee State, Kingsport, Tennessee, one of the captains of the team. A pass complete. It's complete to Hester. Hester in offensively. Look at this. He reverses his field. Hester to the 50, to the 45, and out of bounds of the 40. Is this guy electric? Now you know why you shouldn't kick the ball to the guy. What I don't understand is why Larry Coker doesn't put him out there and at least three times a series get the ball in his hands if you have to turn around and hand it to him. Boy, it must be nice to be in the shoes of Brock Berlin. Tonight you get an idea of the throws he has to make. A lot of them are simple, and then he turns his talent loose on the outside. Guys like Parrish and Leggett and now Hester. That's a nightmare for a second. Oh, nightmare is right. 25-yard game. He just literally went the other direction, and it was hard to get turn to get back to it. Here's Moss again carrying the ball. He has massive thighs, takes it inside the 35. Matt, what's the latest on Michigan? What a day in college football. Oh, man. How about Florida Oklahoma, State. Oklahoma State. And Florida State getting upset. Wow. And right now, North Carolina is playing the third-ranked team even. Here's a handoff to Moss. And Moss is caught up in a lot of Carolina blue as he goes down at the 32-yard line. Not a lot going on that particular play. Moss, of course, the guy who 
last year had to take over when Frank Gore went down with the bad knee. Here's something that I'm seeing that I haven't always seen from this North Carolina team. Look at the pursuit. Look at everybody. They're all flying. I mean, they're like lightning coming after the football. And they're all over the field tonight. They're playing with extra enthusiasm, and they're going to have to keep doing it. And uh, they are trying to focus on their final four games. They'd like to win all four, have a winning season. And here's an end-around handoff. It's a handoff to the tight end, Kevin Everett, and that didn't fool anybody. And look at this Carolina team. They are pumped. So Jeff Longhaney is one-on-one -on, -one on this play. And this is going to be an end-around. Looks like an end-around to Kevin Everett. Yes. And what a job by Longhaney staying at home and making the play. He turns Everett loose there, and Everett's running a long way. John Petty will attempt a field goal. This will be a 51-yarder. He was one of two last week. Last year, he kicked a 51-yard field goal in his freshman year. The kick is on the way, and this kick is no good. So both teams have missed field goals. 5.07 left in the first half. And this crowd is ecstatic. They're playing Miami tough. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina right now as Carolina on a fourth and one, a key play. Remember this, it led to the tying touchdown. And Hedgecock working behind his big fullback. And then on third down, the end around to the tight end, Everett. Long Haney stays at home. A couple key short yardage situations at North Carolina comes out on the comes out on top. They come out on top. We're tied at 14. Second down, eight yards to go as we pick up play. Chad Scott, Ricky Cook now is in as the lead fullback. Holly will come in motion. Here's a handoff now to Scott getting outside. He's to the 40, to the 45-yard line, and that's close to a first down. And let's go back east to Matt. I tell you, that USC team might be hard on your alma mater late in the year. Wow, the they've Bruins. Been, I'll tell you what, what's new? I mean, that team has been rolling people up in October, November, the last three years. First down now to 45, as they did get the first down, and there's a handoff straight ahead. Comes Scott, Scott to the 40. He's to the 35, to the 30, the 20, the 15. Who is this guy? I mean, they should be playing Chad Scott all year long. He has been outstanding. That's a 40-yard run by Chad Scott. North Carolina now has 260 yards total offense here in the first half. 15 first down. Chad Scott continues with beautiful blocking up front. He continues to make people miss in the secondary. Look at him. He's running by people like Mary. Well, those people aren't accustomed to this. I agree with you. He has a 121 yards, guys, on 12 carries and a touchdown. First down now, just outside the 15-yard line. Pollock goes in motion. The late handoff to Scott. Scott trying to bounce it out. Lost his footing and lost a couple of yards. Roger McIntosh, who is going to be playing on Sunday someday. A junior out of Gaffney, South Carolina made the stop. We talked to Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina yesterday. He said, hey, Chad Scott is not a 15 to 18 carry per game back. Well, no, Gary, looks, looks Gary like 13 he, times already. He might be a 30 carry back tonight. Yeah. But Gary, no, Coach Tranquil is one of the really fine offensive coordinators and has been for many years. He didn't know that all of this was in Scott. I can tell you. I can tell. What a pleasant guy, surprise, huh, Bill? Very pleasant surprise for everybody in North Carolina Blue. Second down and 12 now as here's Durant throwing wide open. Catch is made. Scott Brunt. And from it, the tight end takes it in. From it, who's caught only two passes, his first touchdown catch of the season. Everything's working for North Carolina. Well, you've got to take your hat off to Gary Tranquil. What beautiful play calling. Brummett, who was one of those guys along with Sensible, the transfer from East Tennessee State when they dropped football. 
The kick by Barth is up, and Carolina has the lead again. This place is electric. They are loving it here at Keenan Stadium. There is Brummett. His first touchdown catch we mentioned out of East Tennessee State, the transfer. And I tell you, Gary Tranquil has pulled out all the books in this yeah. game. He's done it all. Well, he's he? got a lot of tricks, and he's used most of them tonight. I, unfortunately, I saw a bunch of them uh, when he was coaching uh, against us, and he's a marvelous football coach, and it's nice to see his players responding and executing. He, of course, was a head coach at Navy. And so many years coaching with the Cleveland Browns in the NFL. Bart's going to squib it again, keep it away from Hester. It's eventually going to be picked up and uh, returned up the field across the 30 to the 32. And that was Darnell Jenkins. Let's go back now to Brummett's catch when his first has a Tar Heel. Now, this is just a nice touch ball delivered by Durant on time. And physical play at the goal line by Brummett. He just walked into the end zone and I'll tell you what, Darian Durant, we've watched Chad Scott pile up yards in the first half. North Carolina doing a great job of the running game, but Durant's having enough success throwing the football to loosen the Miami defense. I'll tell you right now, this is what's great about college football. This didn't figure, did it? Well, it didn't figure except that Louisville gained 507 yards, scored 37 points. NC State gained 440 yards, Scored four touchdowns, so we, didn't be, we shouldn't be totally shocked here. All right, Gore with the carry. Let's go to Matt Weiner again. All right, Gary, just a couple minutes away from halftime. Coming up, a burning bush in eastern Washington. We'll check in with the number one team in the country. Number two, a little too much bedlam for them against Oklahoma State. We'll show you the Sooners, plus a Wolverine comeback, a classic in Ann Arbor. I tell you, Adrian Peterson, Matt, was absolutely sensational. 157 yards in the third quarter against Oklahoma State. Gore again wedging it out. So Miami trying to kind of get back into something. Trailing into this game, 21-14. And obviously the emotion all in favor of Carolina. Well, Carolina's defense has not played this well in any film that I've seen this year. David, how about you? No, they haven't. And, and you know, they're not only playing with great intensity on the offensive side of the football, throwing the ball well. But they're matching up toe-to-toe -to -toe in the trenches with the Hurricanes on both sides of the football. You saw Marvin Sanders, one of the co-defensive co-defensive, one of the John Gutekunst. Here's a throw now by Berlin. It's not going to find the mark. It's Leggett who caught the touchdown pass way back at the start of the game. Could not come up with it, and they're going to have to punt it away. If I'm not mistaken, that's the third consecutive stop. John Goodikens right here in the middle of your screen. John's the defensive coordinator, co-coordinator, along with Marvin Sanders, who works with the secondary. John handles the front people, Marvin the passing game. Both of them have got to be extremely proud of this defense that's been giving up over 500 yards average per game. Whole lot will go back to receive the punt. The punt from Brian Monroe and the left footer hits it. They're going to get away from it. It's going to take a Miami bounce, go inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. And with a minute 26 to go, Larry Coker's team, well, they've come from behind twice this season. They're going to have to do it again. I tell you, this is a gorgeous night in Chapel Hill on a beautiful campus. Keenan Stadium nestled among the pines here. And I don't know if there's a better setting. Uh, this has to be one of the top three settings. What a beautiful field and the tr pine trees, the clock tower. Great place to go to school and play football. And kind of reminds you of Westwood. <laughs> yeah, slightly. Here we go now with a minute 26 left in this first half. Hedgecock's going to pound it out, and Hedgecock has been very effective. Brings it out to the 30, a gain of seven on the play. He's got a big, raw bone player, a guy who will run right over you, a senior out of Wahlberg, North Carolina. Well, Bill, the Miami defensive coaching staff, they talked about this offensive line for North Carolina. Uh, Brian Jacobs, Jason Brown, they're just knocking people back. That's a nine-yard game. So 57 seconds left. Little shovel pass this time to Pollock. And Pollock able to bounce it across the 35 to the 38-yard line. McIntosh over to make the tackle. A little shovel. We're seeing more of that in college football all the time. In our production meeting today, I said Pollock's the only playmaker on this offense. Man, was I wrong. 
Well, Chad you, Scott is a playmaker. Now, Ed the... Scott is a playmaker. They got a bunch of playmakers that just haven't been making the plays until tonight. Look at this. 176 yards rushing to Miami's 35. Who the final? Here is Durant throwing. Quick slant. It's complete. And it comes to the 45-yard line. The catch is made. The catch by Jesse Holly. A gain of 17. They'll stop the clock to move the sticks. 37 seconds left. Carolina does have two timeouts left. By golly, there's another playmaker. Proving me wrong again and again. Holly on the catch. Chad Scott, the single running back alongside Durant. Darian Durant throws up the field. Tried to hit the slant again. This time it was Holly. Holly couldn't come up with it. That'll stop the clock with 30 seconds left in this first half. That's a rare misfire by Durant. And Durant had room on that slant. You know, I'm just surprised, guys, not only by the fact they're running the ball, but Miami right now looks a little confused. Looks like they're on their heels. Really well, they are playing. It's, it's sort of the tranquil magic. I mean, a guy that's a really good offensive coordinator has got the running game going. He's going to give you that misdirection with the passes, and this offensive line's protecting well and blocking well for the run. Tough to stop. Second down, 10 now. Durant. Got time over the middle and crossing is Polak. He cannot hang on. He tried to make a one-handed grab inside the 40. Boy, I love this little guy. He's fun to watch out of Bradenton, Florida. Started very slow. Only had four catches in the first three games, but he has come on now. He had 71 catches a year ago. He's one of the real talented possession receivers in college football, working in the slot area. Not very big. And the coaching staff was telling us that he tends to wear down towards the end of the season. Doesn't look like he's wearing down much tonight. Carolina is 2 of 5 on third down, and they have a third down 10 with 25 seconds left in the half. Durant over the middle. 20 and rumbling to the 10-yard line is North Carolina. It looks like for a moment it might be intercepted. Instead, the catch is made by John Hamlet. First and goal, 17 seconds left. A 36-yard pass to another tight end, Hamlet and Brummett. What a surprise they have been. The key to the pass was superb pass protection. Willie McNeil, Kyle Ralph. Jason Brown, Charleston Gray, Brian Chacos, the big guys doing their job for Coach John Bunton. And so North Carolina will use their second timeout. This is a beautiful throw. It's a beautiful throw by Durant. And he's going to throw this right over the helmet of Jenkins, the talented cornerback. Look at that. I mean, this is a beautiful play beating that talented cornerback with the throw drops it into his tight end Durant having a big night from the pocket so Hamlet and Brummett have been the surprises that has been something that Miami I'm sure did not expect so they now have a first and goal at the nine they have one timeout left 17 seconds left in the half now this really fine defensive line for Miami has given all their stunts to this North Carolina front. They're doing tackle, tackle stunts. They're doing in tackle stunts and tackle in stunts. Very hard to pick up the O line and the blue shirts just moving their feet, keeping those hands on those big shoulder pads, and doing a great job of protection. Now, Darian Durant is one of the few quarterbacks in the country that can spin it well enough to pull off an upset against the top five team. And we're finding out tonight about Darian Durant, the way he's thrown the football over the last three years. This guy is capable of springing an upset on the king. Hard to believe what you mean by spin it. Now spin it, throwing it. Yes. We've got you. a nice, tight, accurate football, yes. Yes, and he does. can threaten all areas on the field. Bill. That's that Southern California slogan, which is everybody I'm sure picked up on. Here's Polak going in motion. Durant rolling. He gets it to Jaworski. Polak diving. Looks like he's a yard short. A yard short, out of bounds, 11 seconds, roll over there, defending on the play. They just sent Polak in motion, got the ball to him, and they have it now at the one. And if that were not Andrew Rowe, maybe the best cornerback in the country, that would have been a touchdown. Now that's almost impossible to stop by Rowe because of the timing. And now they're starting to change up the launch points for Durant. He made that throw on the roll and once again placed it right where the ball had to be. And Carolina with one timeout remaining. Here they come now. Rookie Cook and Hitchcock in the backfield. And Durant 
With five seconds on the play clock, he's going to have to get this off. Three, two. He just got it off, and he has the head cut. He's not going to get in. They're going to have to use their last timeout. Boy, he just barely got that ball snapped in time. Uh, you almost, you almost want to call a timeout there to get settled. You don't want to hurry that play down near the goal line. Well. There's no question, guys. We're sitting up here literally amazed by John Bunny's team. I mean, they have exceeded all our expectations. Yeah, and, and this is the way they practiced on Thursday. I, I was uh, pleased to see the enthusiasm, hoping it would carry over into the game. And But i got to confess, I didn't expect anything like this, and I'm guarantee you Miami didn't. Well, how about North Carolina on defense? This, is, this team is ranked 116th in the country coming into this football game, and they are absolutely playing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miami yeah. up front. They are. Emotion makes a difference, doesn't it? Football's a great sport. You always got a chance. That's, that's, the, that's the best thing about it. Bill, it's the first time you've ever been wrong in your life, right? I was there was once back in 68 that I, I thought I was wrong but on further reflection I learned that was not the case all right here's Barth they're gonna try the field goal with seven seconds as they use their last time out this will be a 19 yard attempt now earlier he missed a 39 yarder Boy, this has been all care no they're gonna they're gonna go for it they've changed they're bringing Barth off the field I don't like this and and I just don't think this is the right spot on the field. And now Miami's going to call a timeout. They're confused. They had the wrong personnel on. Well, and, and one thing that Bunting may be thinking here is there's enough time to take a shot into the end zone. And if he doesn't hit it and he's secure with the football, then he can march Barth back on the field for, for a field goal try. Seven seconds is plenty of time to maybe take a shot at the field, but you got to be real disciplined at quarterback to pull this off. Well, I think that under the circumstances with the travail of this North Carolina team thus far this year and the comeback capacity of Brock Berlin, who's shown again and again that you can have him down one touchdown, and that's almost meaningless. I think you're not, you figure you're not going to get this close this many times, and I think this is a time you take the risk. This is not a percentage play to run it here or to try to score, but I think North Carolina needs to do it. I think this is the right thing to do. Well, and it's not as much a risk here, Bill, if they take a shot into the end zone passing the football. It's a nice quick route where you get the ball up in the air early. Then you can march that team back on the field, your field goal unit, and go for three points. But Darian Durant has to be disciplined. He has to take care of the football. If it's not there, throw the ball away and leave some time on the clock. So there's no timeouts left. They're going to try to huddle up as Miami comes late defensively to set up. Yeah, they're, they're going to empty out, I think, here. Hedgecock is the single running back from the two-yard line. Seven seconds. Polak goes in motion. Here is Durant looking his way. Double pumpy throwing, and it's intercepted. It's picked up and going the other way. It's three. He could go all the way to the 50, to the 40, and that'll bring us to the end of the first half. Oh, what a reversal of fortune. Now, we said you had, you had to be disciplined with the football. That was not a disciplined throw. Now, we have a penalty flag down. Darian Duran is saying this might go against the Hurricanes. The question, if it's a holding call, did it come before or after the interception? After the interception, during the run back, illegal block in the back by Miami. A penalty decline, and the quarter is over. And so we go to the end of what has been one of the most exciting halves of football that we have seen all year long. And Bill, you can see the frustration on the face of Darian Durant. This is late. You uh, can't just, throw the ball he late. He has no business throwing the ball up in the air this late. It's almost guaranteed interception on that route. All right, let's go down to Alex Flanagan. She's with Larry Coker. Coach, how do you define the emotion of this first half? Well, again, they played very well at home at night. They've won, been some good football teams here. Obviously, we're in for a tremendous battle. We've got to respond. We've got to tackle better, and we've got to play better defense. And obviously, we're going to have to score. What did you know about North Carolina's number six, Chad Scott, coming into this game? Well, North Carolina's got a lot of talented players. Obviously, he's a backup player for them, but he's a very talented player. Obviously, running very well tonight. And, and uh, they've got good football players. What can the secondary do to shut down North Carolina's offense? Well, again, we've got to put pressure on the quarterback. We've also, we've got to tackle better. All right, Coach, no, thank you. Thank you.
All right, Alex, thank you. Of course, Coker and his team trying to win their 11th straight game. Right now, they're down at half, 21-14. Well, let's go to Matt. We have a surprise at the halfway point of this game. Third-ranked, undefeated Miami, trailing at halftime, 21-14. As North Carolina needing desperately a victory. In fact, there's been talk, guys, that if John Bunning wants to keep his job, he's got to win six games. He had three at the start of the night. Well, it would be wonderful for him and for his team if they could continue to play. They did it the way they did in the second quarter. David, they had 215 yards to 41 for Miami. They had 11 first downs to one. They didn't get that last score, but they've got the momentum, and they really need to cling to it. And, Gary, you mentioned he may need to win six games. He may only need to win four or five if you include an upset against Miami. It would be but big. The, but the key statistic for me in the first half, North Carolina is holding Miami to less than three yards per carry on the ground. I think Brock Berlin is going to have to get things done for Miami in the second half. So let's uh, go to Alex now. She's with Coach John Bunnings. They spoke earlier. All right, Coach Bunting, describe the emotion in the locker room. What went on, what went on during the half? Well, those kids are real excited about the first half of the play, but they also know, they're smart enough to know, that's just a half. And they know who they're playing. Uh, they're excited about our fans. It's been a great night so far. And they want to go out and get started here in the third quarter. Chad Scott making his first start tonight. His career high for you is 76 yards, 118 in the first half. How do how does his play match your expectations? Well, he's had a great, great week of practice, and, and he knows that he's the guy that's going to carry the load tonight. So I'm really proud of what he's done so far. All right, Coach, thank you. Very well. All right, Alex, thank you. Connor Barth will be kicking off for North Carolina. There is Scott, the transfer from the University of Kentucky from Plant City, Florida, a guy who was a freshman All-American at Kentucky, then transferred over to North Carolina. Barth trying to squib it, trying to keep it away from Hester. It's going to be picked up instead by number four, having trouble with it, lost it. And all of a sudden, they have to fall on it at the 15, Darnell Jenkins eventually came up with that. That was a really strange looking kickoff. Well, Carolina with 14 unanswered points and Chad Scott, we've documented his performance in the first half. Able to take it in. Durant then coming back, hitting his tight end Scott Brummett. And Chad Scott with a career high 118 yards in the first half. He's on his way here for a 40-yard ramble. Polak with a catch or tried to come up with it, and the interception by three at the end of the first half. So for the 15-yard line, Miami will start. Brock Berlin, relatively quiet in the game, comes out throwing. He gets his big tight end, Kevin Everett, and that's going to be a first down across the 40, a gain of 11. And Everett's shaken up on the play. A Kilgore Junior College transfer from Port Arthur, Texas, will take himself out, but... They've got another big one in Greg Olson that could replace him. Yeah, this tight end core, you know, with all the greats over the last few years, Bubba Franks and Jeremy Shockey, Kellen Winslow, Miami says they're in the best shape they've ever been at that position. And that is a mouthful when you think about it. First down now to the 26-yard line. Hand off to Gore. Gore bounces forward, tries to move the pile, tough sledding to the 29. So Miami was trying to establish that run in the first half. They were led by Gore with only 21 yards in the first half. Everybody on the North Carolina sideline and on the field must remember that Brock Berlin doesn't even get warmed up until he should be reasonably expected to be out of the game. Then he brings his team back again and again. He may be the best comeback quarterback in America today. How about that Louisville game? They scored on six possessions in the second half, scored 17 points in 20 minutes to pull out the game. That's what you're talking about. In the round, Rostad carries. He's trapped. He's in trouble. Giving ground, still staying alive, and still finally dropped at the 19-yard line. Longhaney, Jeff Longhaney was there, a loss of 10, and North Carolina just would not give up on this play. Well, we mentioned at halftime, North Carolina giving up less than three yards a carry against the Hurricanes. This unit up front has been very aggressive. Longhaney and that down front four. Everett not being able to pick up the first down on third down, and this crowd is fired up. I tell you, they are flying to the football. Third down now, 17 yards to go. 
Quadrant Hill is in the backfield along with Brock Berlin. Berlin being flushed, throws over the middle. And there was nothing there. He had no time to set it up. Berlin is shaken up on the play. He is hurt at the two. And now for the first time, wow, we have to hope that's minor. Hope maybe he's just shaken up for a moment. He took a shot as he tried to hit Hill, yeah, the fullback, over the middle. For the first time, the front four was able to put real pressure on Berlin without any help from any blitzing. Well, that was Tommy was Davis. Tommy Davis. But the crewed uh, up getting ready, but Tommy Davis was putting heat on Berlin immediately up the gut and took him down hard. Tommy Davis, the junior out of Dudley, North Carolina, you see Crudup. Getting ready to go. He battled for the starting job a couple of years ago. The senior out of Delray Beach, Florida. Let's see if we can see what happened to Berlin on this play. We mentioned Davis as he was in his face. Well, Davis coming from the left side here. He's going to come free right up the gut on Berlin. And I think Berlin's going to land on his shoulder. That mm. might have been the right arm or the shoulder. Let's take a look at the hit again, Bill. That's scary when you leave yeah. your feet, when yeah, you leave your feet in the pocket. It's terrible to land on that shoulder blade, and like I said, we just have to hope it's minor, hope that Brock Berlin is okay. We don't ever want anybody to be injured. So the senior from Shreveport, Louisiana, shake it up. We'll be back to check his status, 21-14. It's an anxious moment for Miami. Brock Berlin testing that right shoulder as uh, we'll wait to see if he can come back in. But right now, Miami's going to have to punt the football. Brian Monroe standing at the five. Polak goes back for the time here. Very high punt. Polak coming up, going to let it hit, and then picks it up at the 35. Jaworski Polak, and he goes down at the 38-yard line, and North Carolina will have it there. Buck Ortega over there to make the stop. Here's the BCS standings brought to you by Allstate. Now, one of the things to look at is Utah, who's playing at San Diego State tonight. They now are in that top six, and they just hammered this North Carolina team two weeks ago. Yeah, and with Florida State losing, Utah is moving on up. Miami in trouble. You know, really five undefeated teams six when you count Wisconsin, but five undefeated teams potentially in the top five in the BCS. I tell you, that Utah team rolled for 669 yards against North Carolina in that game. Here's a handoff now to Scott. He shut down then. You can imagine the talk about Chad Scott at halftime. Orion Harris, the veteran defensive tackle there to make the stop. A loss of a yard on the play. This Tar Heel offense gained 351 yards in the first half. Came out, played excellent defense, got the football back. A lot of so-called experts talk about the first five minutes in the third quarter being the most important. No, the rest of the game is important when you play in the Hurricanes. you got to play well all night. Second down, 11 yards to go. Two receivers top of the field now for Durant. Durant play action, a little roll. He's going to run. He's across the 40, the 45, the 50, and that's another first down. So North Carolina, that's got to give them some real confidence in the second half. A 14-yard scramble. So Miami likes to play with two deep safeties and then five men across underneath playing man-to-man -man defense. And as a quarterback... You love to break the line of scrimmage if you have the chance because those five man-to-man -man defenders are going to be chasing receivers. And Dame, Darian Durant has done a nice job tonight running the football at times, keeping that Miami pass rush at a minimum in terms of their momentum up front. He's really made some good decisions. First down now at the 49-yard line of Miami. One. There's a handoff to Scott. Scott bouncing off one, two tacklers. Stings on his feet. He's across the 40, and he's inside the 40. Kareem Brown eventually made the tackle a 10-yard pickup. Let's catch up with Alex, see what's happening with Brock Berlin. Hey, Gary, a sigh of relief here on the Miami sideline. I've been told that Brock Berlin just got the wind knocked out of him, that he will go back in. Also, uh, Miami offensively, Kevin Everett, tight end, who uh, was a little shaken up on a play, has a calf contusion that he suffered. He will also go back in the game, though. Well, that's good news for Miami. Brock Berlin on the phone with the right hand there, and that's good news. One more time on the hit, Tommy Davis, number 80. And as a quarterback, you hate to be in the air right there. 
full force and effect of the weight of Tommy Davis. But being in the air is not near as bad as landing. <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling you, Bill, when you're in the air, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. It's almost oh, worse. Hey, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> it's you know, almost Bert, worse oh, than the impact. I tell you, Berlin's a tough guy, though. He Remember the shot he tough. took against Louisville he in the is. sternum? And he continued on in that game. So he's still in. That was a first down by measurement. Here's Durant back. Going far side. Ball up. Overthrown. Incomplete. He was trying to hit Mason, who caught the touchdown pass to start this game, but they had that one measured all the way. Yeah, we got holding there. Willie McNeil, number 76, the right offensive tackle, did a takedown on Baraka Atkins, number 98. We mentioned earlier, North Carolina, the least penalized team in the ACC, just a little over 34 yards a game, but this is costly here, and it'll bring it back, going to bring up 20 yards to go for the first down as they'll move it back to the 49. Well, Darian Durant, too, has to be careful down the field. He's got to make sure that he has an opening with the wide receiver when he tries to fit the ball in downfield. On that last play, he didn't have a look. He's got to come down to a secondary receiver or tuck that football and run with it. There's the penalty yardage you were talking about. Fourth in the nation. First in the ACC for North Carolina. First and 20. And uh, there's Durant keeping and Durant Let's across the 45 to the 42. Let's go to the studio. Here's Matt Staff. Well, Auburn has beaten Ole Miss five straight times, but you guys are thinking Mississippi's really playing better football. Well, they are playing better football, but I think Auburn, there's a case for Auburn being the hottest team in the country right now along well, with Ole USC. Miss beat them. Ole Miss beat them last year. Second down now, 14 yards to go. The snap comes back to Durant, setting up a screen. He's got it complete. Chad Scott, but he's not going to go anywhere. Lost a couple of yards back to the 45. Great three to have that interception at the end of the first half over there. So you are with us in one of the great settings in college football, Keenan Stadium on the campus of North Carolina. Right now, North Carolina leading the third-ranked undefeated Miami Hurricane, 21-14 with Bill Curry. And David Norrie, along with Alex Flanagan, I'm Gary Fender. And this crowd has been really on fire here. A sellout crowd of over 60,000. From the 45, third down now, 16 yards to go. Trips formation to the near side of the field. Play action, Durant. Complete. Mason makes it inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. Still going to be about nine yards to go for a first down and that was Devin Hester now playing some defense will go back now to receive the punt there's a good old southern word everywhere the guys everywhere there, I mean, you look at him he's on offense and you look at him he's on defense he's out there playing man-to-man -man. now he's going to catch the punt <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I guess, yeah, he's everywhere. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to be everywhere. They just moved him over to be defense. A very special guy. <laughs> just moved him over to defense and fall. Hester at the ten. They're going to kick it into the corner, and uh, we're going to mark this. They're going to move the ball out to the twenty. That'll be a touchback. But uh, I guess um, very smart, staying away from number four, and Brock Berlin will come back on the field. Nearby here, they have the North Carolina Hall of Fame. There's L.T. Lawrence Taylor, and a guy that I thought had the greatest nickname in the history of college football, Charlie Choo Choo Justice. Says it all. He wasn't very big, was he? But he played in the 40s, and he was a legend. Well, he made everybody else look like a caboose. That's what I remember <laughs> when I was a little kid watching him. He could just run away from everybody. They even had a song written about oh, yeah. All the way with Choo Choo or something. That's close. From the 20-yard line, this is a big series for Miami. Quick pitch now. Comes to Hester. And Hester now running the ball. They've got him involved in every way possible as he's able to bring it out for a first down to the 31, a gain of 12. North Carolina has played very well defensively in this football thus far. But I think the key in this football game in the second half is how well North Carolina tackles the receivers for Miami after the catch. They cannot afford to turn these talented wide receivers on the outside loose after the catches in the pass game. You can see in that uh, first half how North Carolina really got the better of it on the ground. They still do. But now Miami trying to change that. Here's Brock Berlin stepping up, puts the tackle, throws up the field. Beautiful catch at the 50. And fighting his way is Hill, the fullback to the 45. Give Berlin a lot of credit. 
He had a lot of pressure. He was hit, kept his poise, and just completed a 23-yard pass. Well, this is what Berlin does so well. Tommy Davis had him again in his grasp. Berlin was strong enough. He just ripped away, and he calmly stepped up and delivered the foot. There you are. That should have been a sack. He just beat the defensive end with physical presence and strength, and he delivered a strike. That's what Brock Berlin does to bring his team back. And this team fully expects to go down the field and score and win this game. Excuse me, Bill. Centerus Moss was the guy that caught that ball for 23 yards, sets it up at the 44-yard line. Looks like the blitz is coming. They're coming after Berlin over the middle, and the tight end, Olsen, did not see the football. Well, let's go down to Alex and get an update on Brock Berlin. Hey, Gary, well, we talk about the physical toughness of Brock Berlin, but what about his mental toughness? I want to remind you guys, this is a kid who was being booed in the first half of the Louisville game at his home stadium. One person whose support has never wavered for Brock Berlin is his head coach, Larry Coker. Coker says that Brock has never flinched once. He's never doubted himself. Brock has handled the pressure so well, especially this year. He says now, Gary, he's learned to just laugh at the booing. Well, right now, he's coming back from taking a real shot, trying to regroup. He's back to throw on second and ten up the field, and Olsen, the tight end, can't hang on. That was Sensabaugh who made the contact and did not allow him to latch onto the football. They say Olsen catches everything. Uh, this is really one of the young talents in college football. Well, almost, almost everything. <laughs> Sen got hit on this play, too, guys, yep. when he released the ball. Terry Hunter, number 91, one of the young, really talented defensive linemen. Carolina coaches really like young Hunter. Four wideouts on a third down 10. Roscoe Parrish is one of those put to the top of the field. Berlin, he tried to hit a wide receiver screen, and that did not get going. It was deflected. And I don't know what happened there. He had the people all over the football field, couldn't get it to him, and they're going to have to punt the football. Well, Tommy Davis and Terry Hunter, defensive end and defensive tackle, respectively, took over for the North Carolina defense. Tommy Davis tipped that ball. Terry Hunter, who's just the freshman, 6'4", 270, made the play. And now there's a little swagger in this North Carolina defense, but I'd be real careful about that. Tommy Davis. A guy who has been very consistent for North Carolina coming up with another big play. This is uh, Monroe putting to Polak. Not a good punt. It's going to hit. Now take a bounce. And it's going to be a beautiful punt. Ending up at the six-yard line. Wasn't very pretty, but very uh, effective. Well, we've talked about Miami coming back. They were trending by seven with under a minute to go. Miami tied Florida State with a 30-yard touchdown pass to Cinerus Moss. They would go on to win the game in overtime when Frank Gore scampered in from 18 yards out. And then, two weeks ago, Miami trailed Louisville by 17 in the third quarter, and Devin Hester's punt return gave Miami the lead of 34-31. The Cardinals responded, but Frank Gore's touchdown run with less than a minute to play gave Miami the 41-38 win. And again, they're in a catch-up posture here tonight. 7.52 to go in the third quarter. Handoff comes to Scott. Scott bursts out of there, gets in some operating room. Boy, this he's is, been impressive. Yeah, this is really remarkable here. Carolina in the first half averaged 8.7 yards on first down. You come out the second half, they're doing it again. I mean, that's about an eight-yard gain on first down. Looks like uh, we have a man shaken up. It's Scott. Chad Scott who just carried it. Now, this is one of the problems. And I'm not saying this in a disparaging way, but Scott has historically always been hurt. He seemingly gets nicked up a lot. And they were wondering if he could hang in here and hold on to what he's been doing thus far in the game. Well, as we mentioned, uh, Gary Tranquil, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina, told us that he is not the type of back where you can have him carry the, ma the mail 15, 18 times a game. And he's up in that range already. He's over 100 yards. And he just hasn't been very durable over the course of his career. McIntosh really layered, lowered the boom on him. Well, McIntosh is shaken up too, though, uh, David. And uh, they're looking at him on the far sideline. But Scott, who has 133 yards on 15 carries. And Scott's done a great job running between the tackles. He's not the biggest guy in the world. Mm. And there's the ankle, the left ankle and knee rolling underneath McIntosh on the, on the tackle. So it looks like Scott will have to 
come out of this game for some time. You wonder if he'll be back. That means they'll be playing a true freshman at running back in Vince Wilson. Well, they may go back to the monster mash, too. Yeah, that's right, with Hedgecock. <laughs> Hedgecock and Cook. That's 500 pounds of tailback fullback, and they hadn't been too shabby tonight. I'll tell you, I really like Chad Scott. He makes me think of Warwick Dunn, and I'll guarantee you it's awfully nice if you're in Carolina blue to see him walking almost normally, and you have to hope that he'll be back in this game and that he's okay. Well, he's really been the X factor in this football game, and I don't think anybody expected him to have the kind of burst and the, and the type of movement hitting the seams and working behind that big North Carolina offensive line. So John Bunning's team with the lead, 21-14, seven and a half minutes left to go in this third quarter. As they now have the man we we're talking about, the true freshman, Vince Wilson in. He's 5'9", 190. He carried the ball six times previous to tonight. And here it comes up, and he's very close to the first down. He may have it. Needed to get to the 17. Let's see where they mark his forward progress. Now what must happen now for North Carolina is the big guys up front on offense have got to suck it up even more. they got to stay on those blocks one more step. Chad's not out here. we got to go with the youngster. Okay, let's give him a little more running room. Well, they're going to measure to see if he got the first down. Very close. Nice run that time by Wilson. You know, that sounded just like a coach to me. Didn't you? Did you? see that David when Bill was saying you know you have to hang in there with the blocks and the emotion behind it oh, it's did very, you catch that is that what it, it sounded takes, like it takes me back a few years to when I was getting coached <laughs> okay now we got a little bit intimidating though <laughs> third and short Carolina moving right along here uh, <laughs> Carolina's got to come up here and run a quarterback sneak and make this first down and keep this football away from that lethal offense on the other side well, they've done a good job. Time of possession. They got the better of that in the first half, and now they would love to keep this football, as you mentioned, third down, less than a yard to go. And Scott's going to go into the locker room. Thus far tonight on third down, Carolina. Three of five with a seven-plus yards, and here is the carry. Straight ahead goes Hedgecock. The big monster mash guy that Bill was talking about. He got the first down. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Tell you what, that San Diego State team, the dark side defense, they are tough. Utah getting the early advantage there in Utah. Then will play Colorado State as they continue on. And, of course, they finish up at home against BYU. Scott uh, looks like he's going to be out for a while. Here's a handoff, and it goes to the big guy, Hedgecock. And Hedgecock able to get it to the 20. Scott goes to the locker room, and Alex has got an update on that. Gary, I've been told that Chad Scott suffered a left hip pointer, as you mentioned, and as you just saw, they are taking him into the locker room for further evaluation, still hopeful that he might be able to return in this game. Tar Heels are going to go with a mix of Hedgecock and Wilson from this point on if Chad Scott can't return, and it looks like it was that left hip. So it's going to bring up now second down and eight for the Tar Heels. Trying to get some uh, field position, keep possession of the football in the lead. Rocky Dumas is in a tight end now. Back to throw Durant over the middle. He completes it. Polak makes the catch. He gets it out to the 25. He'll be four yards short of the first down. They have another third down. Kelly Jennings, the cornerback out of Live Oak, Florida, there to make the tackle. Third down, three down. Clock down to five and a half minutes are approaching there. North Carolina trying to upset the undefeated Miami Hurricane. They've won 10 in a row. Four wideouts. Dumas comes in as the tight end. Gary and Durant has made good decisions. He had one bad play at the end of the first half, suffering the interception of the goal line. Durant is back. Throw it. No, couldn't hang on. Almost coming up with it was Polak. And it'll bring up a fourth down. I didn't like the, the route there by Polak. And I think Polak has got to get a little bit more upfield thrust here, get to the chains. As he's going to lose ground there, and you got to get a little more press, and you get a look at the physical style of Antrell Roll on the outside. And for the first time tonight, Carolina having to punt from deep in their own territory. And you got that specter of having to kick it down there to the guy that nobody... And Carolina sideline wants to see the ball in his hand. And that's Devin Hester. Here's the punt to the far side of the field. And not well done. They're going to have the ball deep. 
in North Carolina territory. They're going to set it up the 40-yard line. Yep. That was only a 15-yard punt. Earlier, 22 yards. Hester just messes up everything. Charlie Choo Choo Justice to find Carolina football from 46 to 49. Honored him Benny Goodman's song all the way, Choo Choo. Charlie had his breakout game back in 1946 versus the same Miami Hurricanes. And so, Choo Choo in this Hall of Fame, his number displayed and uh, did you sing that song for us, David? Do you remember the song? No, I don't remember that song. That's a little bit before my time. But Darian Durant, with his 48 school record, says that when he brought, broke that touchdown record at Choo Choo Justice, that's the record he treasures the most. That was an interesting comment he made. And here's a run by Tyrone Moss. And he breaks down to the 24-yard line before he shut down. After the poor punt, good field position. Miami now trying to tie this game up. 15-yard run by Moss. This defense has given marvelous effort. They've averaged a, a relinquishing three yards per play on first down. But Miami just keeps coming at you, and the defense is going to have to keep the pressure on. they got 21 minutes of football left. Larry Coker's been in these positions before, and his team right now trying to change things. You saw Woldridge, the punter, who's had to alter his punts to keep the ball away from Hester. Hand off to Moss again. He straightened up and dropped. Great reaction that time by the Powder Blue. They were there, the Carolina blue uniform. Longhaney was one of those. Jeff Longhaney, the linebacker, was there first. Doug Justice, not related to Choo Choo, came up with also an assist on the play. Nice job. Nice defensive call by John Goodikens up front. You see both backers up front. Here they come. They're going to cross here and around. No way you can block those guys. And they're clean in the backfield for a nice tackle. That sends the ball starting it up, and Justice finishes it off. A loss of a yard, second down, 11. Inside, four minutes to go in the third. Berlin, double pumping, throwing corner, and his man's not there. He double pumped, turned, and thought that Roscoe Parrish would be on a fly pattern to the far sideline. They were not on the same page. Well, Miami came out in the second half with a renewed commitment to the run game, and North Carolina's picked up on that. North Carolina is starting to play man-to-man -man on the outside. They're using the free safety over the top for help, but you gotta walk, look for those wide receivers on the outside if you're Brock Berlin. North Carolina is starting to man up on the outside. Big play, third and 11. Berlin has missed his last five pass attempts. 0 for 5, and now a third and 11. This crowd is on fire. Here's Berlin again. Going up the field, he completes it. The catch is made, and the big tight end, Greg Olson, drags a Tar Heel with him to the eight-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Miami. It's going to be a future great tight end, Greg Olson. Maybe close to great now. <laughs> that's, that's Milan Carey trying to cover him. He's right. He's close, but not close enough. Barely gets the big guy on the ground. Yeah, this is a nice ball by Brock Berlin. Brock Berlin put that ball in the air before Olsen came open. Great anticipation from the pocket by Berlin. Olsen, a transfer from Notre Dame. He's 6'6", 250-pound redshirt freshman. First and goal at the eight. Hand off Moss. Moss bounces five. Moss to the one. Second. No, they're going to give him the touchdown. He got in. He bounced in. So Moss scores. And now they'll go for the tie with a point after. Boy, Moss, they say he has massive thighs. He just breaks tackles, and there was a good example of it. Yeah, I was down uh, on the field for warm-ups, and I like to look at body types and see who's bouncing around, who looks good in the warm-ups. He's one of the guys that caught my eye. Flag on the field. Off his five yards. Will extend for one on time down. So the point after temp now coming up by Petty. John Petty out of Clearwater, Florida. Boy, I tell you, Moss and Gore, those two guys remind you of each other a little bit. Big body guys, they just pound you. That's what I was about to say. That They kind of jump out at you. You look at their legs and think, wow, I'm not sure I'd like to tackle him. <laughs> and he was dragging people into yes, the Yes, he was. And he took it in. Here's uh, Petty with the point after. And we got a brand new ball game. 
We are tied at 21. 3.13 to go now in this third quarter as Moss able to take it from outside his fifth touchdown of the year. But we saw Greg Olson catch the ball well. Now he's double teaming, just burying the defensive end along with Brandon Seaball, number 75, the offensive tackle. And they go with Gore. Gore's the type of back that can make you miss, and then they bring in Moss, and he is a hammer in between the tackles. Very tough to bring down, and really a punishing runner in short yardage and goal line situation. So we're tied as uh, after the short field, the 15-yard punt, they're able to capitalize on it, and North Carolina needs to get something going offensively. And, Bill, not a good sign for North Carolina the way that Miami's run the football here in the second half. Well, they started at the 40-yard line. The last time that happened in the first half, the defense was able to hold them off, but that, that's not going to last forever against an offense like this. You let them start on your side of the field, and this is a completion of that discussion we started back in the first half. They got like a 70% opportunity of the chance of scoring on an average basis when they start in your territory. That's why the punting game is so important, and that's why the field position game has been so much in the favor of this Miami team all night long. They're tough enough to defend well, yeah. when, you, when you put them on a short field. That's Gary, double trouble. Yeah, you said it best of all. Devin Hester messes up everything. Yeah. And a heck, tar heel. heck of a throw by Berlin to Olsen to keep the drive alive. Yep. And here's the kickoff by Monroe. It's going to be Dell Roberts. Roberts will bring it out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Boy, there for a moment, there was a big gap. Looked like he had a chance to have a big return. And guess <laughs> well, who made the who tackle? Who do you think that was? The Devin that Hester. Torpedo. Hey, tonight at midnight Eastern on ESPN, join Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May for all the news, notes, and highlights for today's game on College Game Day Final. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. How about Hester? He may be the most valuable guy on the field. He gives you about 30 yards of field position on every punt exchange. If you kick it to him, he runs for a touchdown. I think he got a little shaken up. He makes play. tackles. Catches the ball out of the backfield. Go from the 22. Durant needs to get something going just outside. Three minutes left here in this third quarter. He's going to give off to the big guy, Hedgecock. And he's able to spin his way almost to the 25. Roger McIntosh here to make the tackle. Now, this is a crucial moment for this North Carolina team. We mentioned earlier in the game, this is a fragile psyche here. This team has suffered. It's endured a lot of criticism. Much of it deserved, some of it not so deserved. But they've got to come out and they've got to answer this outstanding Miami team with some kind of drive. They don't necessarily have to score, but they need to move the football. Second down coming up, you can see they've allowed 220 yards rushing. Most of that coming in the first half. And they're having a tough time getting it going right now as Durant keeping and got across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Well, Bill, we talk so much about physical football, defensive line versus offensive line. This has become a physical game between the defensive backs of Miami and the wide receivers for North Carolina. They are not letting these wide receivers get off the line of scrimmage. And the passing game, Darian Durant is really suffering as a result. Big third down. Third down and five now. Four wideouts. Dumas is the tight end, and uh, we're going to have a timeout called. Timeout by Miami. So they'll talk it over with 156 left to go. Boy, if you give up the ball, you've got a similar circumstance. You'll be giving the ball to Miami at the short field. Let's go down to Alex Flanagan. Well, Gary, as you guys have mentioned, one of the keys to North Carolina's offense is center Jason Brown. He came to me during the half, shook my hand, and said, this is what football is all about. He is the emotional leader on this team, a captain. Part of the reason why he's such a mature leader may have come because of the tragedy that he has suffered at such a young age. A little over a year ago, he lost his brother, Lunston, who died in Baghdad. Jason told me that Lunston now lives at the family's farm here in North Carolina. They buried him in on the farm and they plant flowers on his grave. As a reminder to Jason, Gary, he wears his brother's dog tags always. Yeah, and he pulled them out when we were talking to him oh, in the meeting yeah. and I just sat so there good. mesmerized. And I tell you what, Jason Brown is one of my heroes. Yeah. You watch him and you get to be around him. A lot of people won't get to see these guys in the trenches and no. see what they're all about. 
He is the epitome of what is good about college football. I'm amazed week in and week out when we go on the road and we meet with some of these young scholar athletes. And, and really, when you sit down with a guy like Jason Brown, it makes it all worth it. I mean, I, I, have, I have not seen a kid as impressive as Jason Brown in a long time. And, and uh, those, that was really a special moment yesterday to hear him talk about his brother. So Miami called for the timeout. They think they're going to get the football back third down and five now for Durant. North Carolina needs something good to happen. Good protection. Excellent protection. A throw complete. A catch made by Hamlet, the tight end, and they got it. Boy, you talk about pass blocking. There was absolutely nobody getting to Darian Durant. Randy Shannon is pulling out all the stops with pass rush stunts trying to get to this quarterback. Watch Jason Brown. Boom, right there. Big guy. Oh, the loot. Javon Nanton, number 57, oh, oh. trying to come up the pipe. And he gets a mouthful of Rydell for his trouble. And down he's buckled. Jason buries him. First down. And Darian Durant threw that behind his big tight end. What a play by his tight end to turn around and make that catch gear down in the seam. Hamlet with three catches for 51 yards. You talk about stoning somebody. <laughs> that was a stone play by Jason Brown. I mean, he just shut that play down. We're going to have a timeout. Now Miami's used two timeouts here. Hell and looks like Chad Scott's back on the field. I don't know if he'll be able to play, but that may be very encouraging for Tar Heel fans here. As Scott with his brilliant performance. Hey, uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night on ESPN as our 19 consecutive days of football continues with Sunday Night Football. This week, two of the NFL's most storied franchises, the Chicago Bears and the San Francisco 49ers. Brian Erlacher will be running all over the football field. It's taking place in historic Soldier Field. Coverage begins with NFL Primetime presented by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. You know, Gary, after Gary and Pill, after the, the interception by Darian Duran at the end of the first half, he really hasn't been himself. I mean, he, he came out, he played so well in the first half, even when they picked up the first down on that last play. It, it, it just was not a good throw, and I think Durant is still a bit shaken from the decision he made at the end of the first half. And he was red hot to start off this football game. Well, I think that's a really astute observation. I think you're right. He hadn't seemed quite the same. And he's going to have to regain his touch and his magic for them to stay in the game. You said it in the open. He's got to be a masterful player all night long for them to be a, a contender with this heavyweight they're fighting. You know, he's played so well, and yet as a starter, his record is 8-21, and 21, and really not indicative of how well he has done as Scott trying to loosen up on the sideline, but they did convert the third down. Here's Durant on a half roll, flag on the play. He's going to take off, gets to the 40, to the 43, but as we mentioned, a flag was thrown at the get-go. Nanton over to make the tackle for the Miami Golden Hurricanes as they're going to mark the ball at the 43, and it's against Miami, the Hurricanes offside. I'll tell you a really funny thing. I was down there during warm-ups, and the Miami defensive linemen were lining up offsides in the warm-ups. And I thought to myself, geez, the coach hadn't said anything to him. And, and I'm, Randy Shannon is not going to be happy. That's about the third time that's happened tonight. You give him a cheat. This is a first and five now. What North Carolina needs to do is make first downs. First and five is lovely. Well, what they've done now, guys. Replay first down. Because they've reasserted themselves field position-wise. Oh, yes. And that's they've huge. Changed, they've changed the field position. They needed to do that. Now they need to take it on down. And even maybe even more importantly, you didn't want to see that. If you're, if you're Coach Bunning, you didn't want to see that defense come back out on the field after three plays. You didn't want to see a three and out. John Bunning, the guy who... We mentioned this fighting for his life here in North Carolina. What a win this would be. Here's a handoff to Hedgecock. Hedgecock is going to pound it forward. Drags the tackler across the 45 to the 46. And uh, let's go to Matt Leonard. Auburn trying to go 9-0 and on the year. And so now it'll bring up second down and two for North Carolina. We're tied at 21. 20 seconds left in this quarter. Hedgecock is the tailback. And Hedgecock's going to get the ball, steps it away, slams forward. I'll tell you, he is a bulldozer as he gets across the 45 to the 46. It'll be third down, though. Still a yard to go as we come to the end of this third quarter. Boy, they're throwing the leather around down on the field there, Bill. You could, you could hear the helmets colliding from way up here in the press box. 
So we have 15 minutes. Out there. 15 minutes to go from Keenan Stadium. We're tied. We go to quarter number four. Here's a big play coming up. Third down in a yard. And uh, quarterback, uh, what do you think, Norris? Carolina wants to win this game. They need to fake it in the line and throw and go for the touchdown. Whoa. What Great do you time think, David? to put it up. I think they'll keep it on the ground here. Well, let's see. And Durant gives a headshot. There's a penalty flag. Headshot move. So that is going to change the call. The flag calling back what looked like might have been a first down. I think he was very close, but it's going to be go against the Tar Heels. So after all that waiting for the quarter change, they move, and that's a costly penalty for Unbelievable. Carolina. Unbelievable Huge. mistake. Illegal motion, 44 offense, five yards, three in spot. We play third down. So it's going to be third down now, six yards to go. Bart Starr used to kill people on third and short, even fourth and short, out in the field like that. And didn't, people didn't expect it from a conservative offense. And, and these are the games in which you must take intelligent risk when you've got a shot at something like that. Especially when you're trying to beat the number three ranked team in the country. Chad Scott, by the way, is back in the game. Scott is in and running back. Third down, six yards to go. Durant, protection is there, throws up the field, and it's cut. It's Holly. Jesse Holly makes a huge third down and six. Catch across the 45 to the 44. That's a gain of 15 on the play. The Miami playing man to man, five across. And how do you attack man-to-man -man defense? You run crossing routes. You allow your wide receivers to run away from man defenders. And Darian Durant, great patience, great work by the heavies up front, giving him time. And that is a beautiful throw on the dig route. And they're 6 of 12 on third down after that conversion. They set it up inside the 45. Hey, Durant's getting some protection when he needs it. Beautiful blocking up front the last time. Here's a quarterback draw. Durant is able to... Drag people, fight his way inside the 40 to the 38. And Atkins eventually there, and that's the big, strong legs of Durant. I mean, he is a tough guy to tackle. He is Baraka Atkins. You notice if you're watching closely, he's trying to rip the ball out. That's another thing that Coach Bunning and his staff has to remind constantly, remind their players, secure the football. This defense takes it away so often. Gain of six, second and four, and this is going to be Scott. He's back in, and Scott got the first down, and he looks healthy to me. That was a good cut that time as three made the tackle. And that's a great point that you made earlier, Bill. I mean, one of the concerns with Scott and Wilson, as we talked to the offensive coaches for North Carolina during the week, was ball security. They tend to drop the ball, put the ball on the ground, both in practice and games. Three just picked up a moment ago. His eighth tackle, make it his seventh tackle of the game. That's going to mark the ball now at the 34. So North Carolina starting this fourth quarter very successfully. This drive is a great encouragement to Carolina. This Miami team, when leading at the end of three quarters, has won 174 out of 176 games. But they weren't leading this time. Well, that's an amazing stat, isn't it? Here's a handoff to Scott. Scott gets wide. He's to the 30. He's to the 25. And he... Did the ball come out? He may have come out. No indication, though, that there's a change of possession. It's going to be Carolina ball. Scott got to the 25. He's about a yard short of the first down. Coming out of the ball game now. Shaken up on the play is Kareem Brown. Defensive tackle. He limps off the field. Well, Scott has shown the speed to match the speed of Miami. Watch his cut to the right. Back up into the hole. Contact. And does the ball is out. Underneath his left elbow. And Scott didn't get that back. That was an offensive lineman. Couldn't get a look at the number. It might have been Jock Dumas. Anyway, it's going to bring up second in the yard. Scott again. Got the first down. Scott's got more. Look at this guy. Leg drive. As he gets it to the 21. Yeah, Scott becoming a big, big story in this football game. Yeah, Jacques Dumas was the hero coming up with that football. They did rip the ball out. Kelly Jennings ripped the ball out of Scott's grasp. And because Dumas was hustling on the play, he got on the football instead of that Miami defense. This is a very impressive drive 
by this beleaguered North Carolina team. Scott now with 150 yards rushing on 19 carries. He remains in the tailback. First down now as Durant now changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And Durant has an opportunity man to man. And a flag is thrown. He's flushed out and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Had no chance whatsoever because Leon Williams, the middle linebacker, but as we mentioned, a flag earlier. Well, Darian Durant looked out and he saw man to man on the noses of his wideouts. That's the fourth time that Miami's lined up offsides. If you line up offsides in warm-ups, you're going to line up offsides in the game, and it really is a very welcome gift to this inspired North Carolina team. Well, the Hurricanes have had a full blitz. Number 95, five yards. First Hurricanes had an all-out blitz called, and Durant recognized it, checked off. He was going to go out to the wide side, to the left side, to Darrell Mitchell. And the Hurricanes, so anxious to time the snap, were in the neutral zone. First and five now. And look at this. They, they are got Scott with the ball. They came up like a rugby scrum. Everybody got up to the line of scrimmage. They were all bent down. Scott took the snap and rolled out and picked up the yeah. first down. And he can't believe he didn't score. Somebody grabbed him by the shoelace. Or he goes in the end zone. What's this, guys? Three. <laughs> well, Durant, Pollock, and Hedgecock are going to roll to the right. And Scott keeps. <laughs> I tell you, when you're going to upset an undefeated third-ranked team, you got to pull out all the stops. Yeah, don't you? John Bunning messed with me because I asked him yesterday, you got any funny stuff up your sleeve? Not really. No, not too much. Just going to go at him. I think that was a funny thing, a yeah. funny stuff right oh, there. First and goal now, just inside the 10-yard line. We're tied at 21, and the handoff, and this is going to be taken in for the touchdown. It's Scott again. Scott undenied. Cracks in, and North Carolina has retaken the lead. So, we have what I would call an outstanding football game. 10.57 left to go. They're just going after each other tonight. Connor Barnes to attempt the point after with 10.57 left of the game. The kick is on the way. And it's 28-21 North Carolina. Chad Scott. Sensational effort. By the way, Darian Durant's going to the locker room. North Carolina in an upset mode as retaking the lead. 28-27 with Bill Curry and David Nor and Alex Flanagan. I'm Gary Bender. Outstanding game unfolding. As I mentioned before the break, Durant went into the locker room. We believe he had to go to the bathroom, so he's right back out on the field. Why don't you come right out and well, say what I you're just, thinking? Well, but, but I mean, we want to be sure he wasn't hurt. We're just on top of everything, aren't we? You, you go to the bathroom, we're there. I hope we don't have a replay. <laughs> Boy, this is really says something. As uh, North Carolina's never beaten the team, ranks in the top five, trying to pull it off tonight. There's that little squib kick. Hester's going to try to gather it in. It went right through his legs. He goes back, and he's going to go to a knee, and that'll be the touchback, and they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. I tell you, that was a pretty effective kick that time. Well, it ran up the front of him last time, and he ended up having to fall on it poor full field position. This time it went through his legs. What North Carolina has to hope is that he never picks one of those things up on the dead run. Yeah. But then your, your coverage, he hadn't played a lot of shortstop in his life. Yeah. I don't uh, think the Red Sox or Cardinals are going to sign him anytime soon to play shortstop. I'll tell you what, I'd sign him to play on my football team. There is Scott. What a game he yeah, has He's had. been wonderful. Chad Scott's been just great tonight. Here we go. 10.57 left to go from the 20-yard line. Brock Berlin. His team down by a touchdown again. Berlin on a roll. Throws up the field, and it's complete. And the catch will set it up at the 34. The catch made by Darnell Jenkins. And here's our Yamaha game track. Scott was injured in the third quarter, and you wondered if he could come back. He's been sensational. And then Tyrone Moss tied up the ball game at 21 all. And then Scott came back from the injury, and he has given North Carolina a 28-21 lead. 
First down at the 35. Moss is the running back now, along with Hill, the fullback. Hand to Moss. Moss to the corner. Flag on the play. 45. And boy, I tell you, when you challenge him in the open field, you are taking on a load. And Cedric Holt did and made the tackle, but there is a flag. It's going to be holding against Miami. Yeah, it looks like this hole is going to go against Derek Morse, the right guard. 71 offense. 10 yards, previous spot. Replay first down. Now, he's a guy that came as the starter replacing Tyler McMeans, who was out with a left knee injury. And Morse, a redshirt freshman out of Fort Myers, and they caught him that time. And it's going to be a first and 20. Yeah, Derek Morse getting his first start right here. He's going to get caught for a takedown inside. Looks like he was working against Bynum. First and 20. From the 24 of Miami. Berlin has two receivers to the near side of the field. Over the middle, and he tried to hit Olsen. The big tight end he went up, could not hang on at the 45. It'll bring up second down. Let's go to Mad Weiner. Yeah, and that A&M is going to play host Oklahoma next week. So you wonder if they might be looking past Baylor a little bit. Second down. Berlin over the middle of the crossing pattern. It's complete to the 40, to the 45. And you see the speed that time of Lance Leggett, the true freshman. And they gobble up all the yardage. They needed 20. They got more than that. They have a first down. And North Carolina is playing man-free in the secondary to get numbers up on the line of scrimmage. They're trying to take control of this game by turning away the run. But Brock Berlin knows that if he can hit his wide receivers on some crossing routes against man, he's got some talent that can make yards after the catch. That was John Gutekunst, one of the co-defensive coordinators for North Carolina. First down. Hester is in the backfield along with Moss. Devin Hester. He's the lead back in the eye. Here is Berlin on the play action. Going for all of it. Ball is up and overthrown. As he tried to make the connection with Roscoe Parrish, but he overthrew it. And when Hester comes in in the fullback spot, there's a very good idea that a part of the package for him that Larry Coker told us that he had is they're going to try to isolate him. And, David, you've already noted it, a lot of man coverage from Carolina now. They get him on a linebacker or a strong safety, and it's to the house. Can't cover him. Well, in Tar Heels, part of their game plan on defense was to mix things up against Berlin. They went right back to zone there on the first down play. I, Didn't I believe, have an opportunity. I believe I'd stay in it. <laughs> I, would, I would too, Bill. Right now, the Miami speed really going to be hard for North Carolina to contain at the last 9.38 of this game. Berlin gives off to Moss. Moss wedges it out across the 50 to the 49. And uh, let's go to Man. This has been a crazy Saturday, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And the, the emotion in this stadium is electric right now. It's a wonderful place to be. Third down and six. I agree with you, Bill. It is a great place to be. Third down, six now. Inside, nine minutes left in the game. Four wide outs. Berlin, crossing pattern. A catch is made by Centerus Moss. He's got another first down. And the crossing pattern, you said this, David, really starting to pay dividends for Miami. Well, I think that Ber Brock Berlin needs to be patient. He doesn't have to make the real tough throws down the field like he tried to make to Olsen at the start of this drive. If he can just make the simple throws to guys like Moss and Parrish and Leggett, they have such great speed running away from the man-to-man -man defenders, and they're so good after the catch. Centerus, of course, the little brother of Santana Moss, who's now with the New York Jets. First down at the 35. Miami trying to tie this game up. Philip Humphreys now come in at the fullback spot. Moss is the tailback. This is Moss. And he's hit. I mean, instantaneously. Great reaction by Tommy Richardson, the ex-safety now linebacker for North Carolina. And that was Richardson isolated on the speedy wide receiver, Moss, the play before. This time they brought him off the corner. He's a little bit better at that sort of thing. He was unblocked and made a big hit in the backfield. It was like a strong safety flip. Very smart. They called him the emotional leader of this defense. And the junior out of Miami, North Miami Beach, made a big play. A loss of three, second and 13. Good recognition by Marvin Sanders, co-coordinator. 
two receivers put to the top of the field. Red looks, double pump, going deep, into the corner, ball is up, overthrown as he tried to hit Lance Leggett. And Berlin still trying to go for it all on two occasions, but North Carolina has been there. So what, what Larry Coker's saying to North Carolina is, I see the man coverage, and every time you get in it, we're going to put it up. Well, there was man coverage on that on that play, but Kareem Taylor was playing as a helping safety behind, and Taylor played that play perfectly. He kept his depth as a safety, even when the pump fake burned the corner underneath. North Carolina, I should say, Miami is 3 of 8 on third down. This is third and 13. Trips formation, top of the field. This place is alive. It is wild. Berlin stepping up. It's Olsen, the tight end, but he's not going to get the first down. On a third and 13, he's cut down by Cedric Holt, the linebacker out of Wadesboro, North Carolina. He only weighs 190, and he took on that big 6'6 tight end. And even a third and long, I think Coker's going to go here. I mean, it's a long field goal, fourth and long. Excuse me, but I think Coker's going to go. This is too long a field goal try. Fourth down and eight. Big play of this game. Zone, zone coverage that time. You can see what they need to get. Just to the 25, just outside it. Berlin was headed to the sidelines, and Coker motioned him back on the field. Berlin, you can hardly hear right now. Throws up the field, and Olsen dropped it. He has dropped a couple today. Three to be exact. And that's a big drop. North Carolina's got the football. Guess who made the hit? Gerald Sensiball, who said he wasn't all that impressed with this offense anyhow. He's the same guy that lit up Olsen the last time the big, big man went down the middle. And we documented Sensiball was the guy that gave Miami some bulletin board material. Said that uh, they had a simple offense. Well, I think thus far he has backed up his talk. Oh, it was a wonderful play breaking on that football. I thought it was just as much his break on the football as a drop by Olsen. And you know, Sensabaugh, when you talk about Berlin and this football team, the Hurricanes, the way he did, that's right in the big check. And oftentimes it comes back NSF, Bill. You know what that means? Yes, I do. Insufficient funds. Here's Scott. Scott down to the 35, 36. Now, what is critical in this game is that Miami had to burn a couple of timeouts earlier. They're down to one timeout as they try to get the ball back. Well, Berlin makes a nice throw, and he's facing some pressure in the pocket. Olsen needs to secure that football, but also a great play by Sensaba over, over with the left arm coming down on the, on the, on the reception by Olsen to shake the football free. Rock Berlin hopes to get the ball back. Six and a half minutes left to go in the game. His team down, 28-21. Chad Scott is in the backfield. They have a cluster of receivers to the top of the field. Hand off to Scott. Little delay, bounces outside. He's to the 40, to the 42. Nice vision that time by Scott picking up the yardage. Let's go to Matt once again. San Diego State, Tom Kraft's team is a handful defensive. If they get any offense going, Utah could have a real body brook before it's over. Third down now, three yards to go for Carolina. 540 left in the game. A rollout by Darian Durant. He's going to now run it and throw it at the last minute. And uh, that'll go incomplete. They say he was out of bounds. I think they say he stepped out of bounds before he threw the ball. And yes, they will did. mark it. So he that's going to bring up a fourth down. The Rocket Atkins was over there putting the pressure on. Atkins, who... They say can literally dominate a football game. The sophomore out of Sarasota was there. And now, what do you do here? You've got Hester going back. Woolridge has punted 122 and 15 yards. You don't think maybe Hester isn't in his head a little bit? Well, they're going to put two people back there. And talking to the coaches, Don Solinger, who's the uh, special teams coach before the game, I was standing on the field. He said, we're going to put two back there and make him kick to one of us. Oh, and at least if you only get off a 20 or 25-yard putt, angling it out of bounds, the Hurricanes will get it in their end. So here is Woldridge, who has had uh, a less than memorable night thus far. He just kicked this it away, and he hammered it. And they're going to have to call for the fair catch. And Woldridge, he has to be exonerated. He probably feels, why didn't you let me do this all night long? What a punt. 
That was a 52-yard punt by Waldridge, the sophomore out of Advance, North Carolina. Miami with the ball. What a day we've had in college football. We're going to take a look at some of the scores, the big scores that we have had. USC beating Washington State. Auburn battling Ole Miss. Look at this. Georgia defeated Florida. Florida State was beaten. And if Miami loses this game tonight, we're going to show you a graphic that's stunning. The last time the three Florida schools lost a football game on the same day goes all the way back to 1978. Back to throw is Berlin. Sets up a screen. Complete to Gore. Gore up to the 20. Breaks the tackle to the 25 to 30. And Gore able to negotiate the 35-yard line before Jacoby Watkins was over there to make the tackle. Co-defensive coordinator Marvin Sanders was very explicit with us yesterday. He said, we're looking for people to make plays. We need somebody to step up and make a play for us. Well, Gerald Sensabaugh has made plays. Tommy Davis has made plays. Jeff Longini has made plays. Now, about 11 blue shirts got to make plays if they're going to stop this juggernaut, the Miami Hurricane. That was a good point, Bill. Somebody else may have to make a big play if they're going to win this one. Here is Berlin back. Going deep. Ball up. They keep going long. They can't make the connection. It was going to be Darnell Jenkins, the intended receiver, and they could not get to him. Tonight at midnight Eastern on ESPN, join Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, and Mark May for all the news, notes, and highlights from today's game on Cottage Game Day Finals. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. They keep going for that home run ball. Yeah, and if Berlin's going to go for the home run ball, he's got such talent on the outsides. Give your wide receiver a chance to make a play. Even if they're covered, you can't overthrow it. Quadrant Hill is in the backfield with Berlin. 4.55 left to go. Carolina trying to pull a major upset. Here is Berlin. Time to throw. Broken up, batted down, and caught eventually by one of the Miami players. We'll have to wait and see who came up with it. It was a live ball. It's Berlin. 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 I think it's Berlin. Berlin that got it back. That's right. You it was Berlin. Can't throw it again, so he has to try to run it. The reason North Carolina, in my opinion, not really much, but Miami, is so powerful in the fourth quarter is because they outcondition people. Look at here. Great play by Seawright up in the air. Batted back in his face. Six foot six, Seawright, we might add. Third down already. Third down and 12 after Berlin cut his pass. Looking up the field. Throw. It's caught. First down to the 50-yard line. And that will be Lance Leggett, who's now becoming a big factor in this game. He has a first down to the 45-yard line of North Carolina. Well, Berlin stepped up in the pocket and made a big-time throw. That's an NFL-level throw right here at a time when the Canes need it. Good footwork. It's that right foot planted, and the ball comes out in a hurry. Berlin trying for the third time this season to bring Miami from behind. They pulled it out against Florida State and Louisville. Now down 28-21. 3.58 left in the game. Berlin stepping up, throwing far side. A catch is made, and that's going to be Buck Ortega, their third string tight end who made the catch. He's very close to the first down. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Mr. Kroom, a two-game win streak. Thank you, Matt. Second down and a yard to go. Berlin going for the far side. The ball deflected and incomplete. Akeem Jala was the intended receiver, and they could not make the connection, so they will come back to a third and a yard to go. Yeah, I want to complete a thought. This Miami team is so devastating in the fourth quarter because their conditioning coach, Andrew Swayze, works them so hard in all that heat. And down in the warm-ups, there's almost no body fat on this football team. Some of the offensive linemen have a little. Everybody else, about 4%. So they just keep playing. North Carolina has got to match their intensity. Four of ten on third down for Miami. Third in the yard. And up straight ahead, Gore, and he's got the first down and then some. Pounds it forward, they'll stop the clock as they'll have the first down just outside the 32. Doug Justice, Tommy Richardson on the tackle for North Carolina. And so Miami with one timeout remaining, down by a touchdown, 3.13 left in the game. As we watch Brock Berlin, it almost seems like he gets in a rhythm when he's behind or when he's in a two-minute offense situation. And he brought this team back against Florida down 23 points a year ago, down 10 nothing against Florida State this year, and, of course, 17-point deficit against Louisville. First down now, three wideouts on the play. Berlin 
over the middle. Ball up. Roscoe Parrish. Did he get it? They are debating, and I think they're going to give it to him. It is a catch. He was able to slide to the catch. They're discussing it, and they're going to give him the catch. It's going to be at the 11-yard line. First down. Well, Parrish lost his footing, and the ball was thrown slightly behind him, but because he lost his footing, it's just a heck of a play by Parrish. Now, Parrish is on a deep dig route, loses his footing, and the ball was thrown right where you need it if you do lose your footing. Talk about some athletes, huh? What a catch. 22-yarder. Devin Hester's now come in. Hester is in the backfield. First down at the 11. The blitz coming. Here's Hester with the ball. Hester to the 10. Hester to the 5. Hester with a great speed. Dives in. Devin Hester is one of those guys that you just have to have on the football field. And there's a good example. As you've said before, speed kills, and they made all the difference as he took it in, and it's a one-point game. And this Miami team taking the ball off their own nine-yard line fully expected to do what we just saw them do. They go down the field. They're in superb condition. They expect to score. They score. Now they're going to try to tie it up for the extra point. North Carolina has to match them. Petty, the point after attempt, the kick is up, and we're tied again. 28 all, 225 left to go. John Bunning's team, again, do they have another touchdown or field goal in them? We'll come back and find out. Yeah, I mean, they did have the corner block. There are a lot of folks, a lot of good backs that would not have made that. All right, Devin guys. Hester ran his customary 4-2, and he got in the end zone. <laughs> Let's set the scene. We're tied at 28, 225 left to go. Carolina with three timeouts left to try to keep this game from going into overtime. What do you expect? Well, I expect Miami to bring the heat on defense. Here is the kickoff now. It's going to be hauled in at the 10-yard line, and uh, this is going to be a freshman. We've been talking about Dell Roberts, who brought it out. We have a flag on the play as Roberts got up to the 25-yard uh, line. It's going to be against North Carolina, so that was short circuit, this big drive. And uh, let's go down to Alex Flanagan. Alex? Well, Gary, you talk about Devin Hester's idolization of Deion Sanders. Well, when Deion found out about it, he decided he was going to call Devin, give him a little advice, tell him how much he liked him. Ever since Deion said that Devin has been anxiously waiting for his phone call. Well, that phone call came today. His cell phone rang, but guess what? Hester was in a team meeting. He missed the call. He called Dion back, left a message for Dion because Dion couldn't answer. So the two are trying to hook up. The saga continues, but Devin says it would be a dream come true for him to talk to his idol, Dion Sanders, Gary. Well, the way he's playing tonight, Dion better call him. This guy is worth a call. Isn't he? well, he's going to get some phone calls from the NFL, and it won't be long. Boy, is he something. So here we go after the penalty. They're going to start this drive from the 10-yard line. 2.19 left. Again, North Carolina has all three of their timeouts. Miami with one remaining. As Durant now will give off to Scott. And Scott able to wedge it out close to the 15-yard line. So, guys, tell me what you expect. What do you think now with two minutes plus left? Well, Miami has got to bring the heat. So they've got to be careful with Durant, but they got to get somebody after him with the front four, I think. Keep pressure on him. Well, and I don't think the key is that North Carolina has three timeouts. I think the key is Miami has only one timeout. North Carolina, if they can move the chains once or twice, they can control the clock, not leave time for Miami. So Durant's going to safety valve it off. Scott with the catch. Scott's got the first down, and he stopped the clock as he went out of bounds with 142, a pickup of 12 on the play. That's a huge first down, especially after the penalty. You know, when, when North Carolina started this drive backed up and really thins out your playbook, the first down helps there. And now North Carolina can control the clock. Even if you don't score here, you want to make sure that Miami doesn't have a chance to win in regulation. At a market at the 26, Scott remains in. Chad Scott has given North Carolina a chance. I mean, more than a chance. He has just been scintillating tonight. The big story of this game for the Tar Heels. Durant looking for somebody to get the ball out to. Now takes off, stays on his feet. Good effort to the 30. Picked up four yards. It'll bring up a second down. 
offensive line coach Hal Hunter's got to be so proud of his troops. The big guys are just given marvelous protection. Frantic effort by the Miami front four trying to get heat on Durant to no avail. And Durant was trying to call timeout there, and his coaching staff waved off the timeout. Because they have for a man two, hurt. Yeah, for two reasons. Not only for the man hurt for, for the Hurricanes, but also Bunny knows that he wants to work the clock. He wants to get this clock down inside a minute, then start worrying about getting in field goal range. That's Brian Pata, a sophomore out of Miami who is shaken up and a uh, guy who hopes to get a crack at a winning field goal is Connor Barth, the true freshman out of Wilmington, North Carolina, down by uh, Wrightsville Beach area, beautiful area here in North Carolina. So... Pata being uh, looked over. They still have their three timeouts left. There's a minute 27 left. It's going to bring up second down and six now for North Carolina. But Bill, you've been in a lot of big games as a head coach, and you know right now you're telling your quarterback to be safe with the football. He made a big mistake at the end of the first half. That's right. Durant's a veteran. He's been in these situations numerous times. He knows that the margin of error is zero. He's got to be perfect. You said it in the open. He's got to play the game of his life. And right now, the chips are down. This is it. This is why you play college football, be on one of these teams. Now, there's another one of those big offensive efforts against Miami we were talking about. Remember, we were talking yeah. about Louisville, what they were able to do. And now, North Carolina at the 500-yard mark. If you're wanting to, wondering about Barth, he does have a 50-yard field goal that he kicked which is the longest, as I mentioned earlier, in the history of Carolina for a freshman. So for the 30-yard line, second down and six. Durant throwing far side. The catch is made, and that's Pollock. He's got a first down. Stop the clock. Beautifully done as they bring it out to the 44-yard line, a 19-yard pickup on the play. That is a great throw in a pressure situation, and that really took some nerve from Durant dangerous throw to the sideline and he dropped it in beautifully that might have been his nicest throw of the night well, Durant now has a first down with a minute 11 left to go looks like they're coming after him on the blitz they are Durant over the middle wide right open the catch is made by the tight end Hamlet Hamlet to the 35 and now they're very close to field goal range as a minute five, they stop the clock to move the sticks. Miami has challenged Durant. They're coming after him. They're blitzing, rushing six, which means they're isolated in man coverage. At that time, the big fella just got away. And 11 defenders for Miami looking to the sidelines, but they're not getting any timeout signals. Only one timeout left. So no need to burn it right here. North Carolina can control the clock. Hamlet, four catches, 78 yards. The tight ends have been huge in this game for North Carolina. Hand off to Scott. He's hit from behind. Play very slow developing. And that's Roll. And for Roll, who came from his cornerback spot. Clock running with 37 seconds. they got to hurry up here. Uh, that's all right. They can burn some time here. Connor Barth hit a 50-yarder earlier this year. And they said it would have been good from 60. Second down and 12. A loss of two on the play. Durant back. Going up the field. He hits his tight end again. At the 31, it's Hamlet. And uh, they timeout. will use the timeout. Stopping the clock with 17 seconds. And they have two remaining. So we'll come back to see if, in fact, we will go to overtime or North Carolina can pull it out. This is a true freshman. The game may rest on his leg. Connor Barth, he missed a 39-yard attempt way back at the 5.02 mark of this first quarter. We look at it again. It was wide left. Right now, if he kicked a field goal, it'd be about 47 and a half yards. Third down, six yards to go. Pollock goes in motion. Hedgecock is in the backfield. Quarterback draw. Durant trying to get closer. And he may get a first down. He is very close. He needed to get inside the 25. Boy, that makes a considerable difference if they're going to kick the field goal. Well, it also puts the ball squarely in the middle of the field. And that's really smart coaching. It's tough to make a field goal off the right hash if you're a right-footed kicker. Right in the middle of the field, a little more comfort for the true freshman bar. They're going to measure to see if he got the first down. Well, and, and the officials after the measurement here, I think North Carolina wants to use a quarterback sneak here. You do not want to leave any time on the clock for Devin Hester. If you he made the first down. That's correct. So it was a third and six on that play. Let's see if they got the first down. Looks like they're short. They are, so they're going to have to kick it now. Kick it. 
Yep, it's fourth it. down. They're going to have to kick it. Boy, just by inches. Now Miami will use a timeout here after they wind the clock. So well, here they, sh they should. Well, they're not indicating they're going to kick it right now. With 12 seconds left on fourth down, they're indicating they will... Well, they're going to oh, start gonna, the clock out. Run yeah, the clock yeah, that's what they'll do. They'll run the clock down and then bring Barth in. And Durant will stand right next to the referee. He's telling him we want to stop it at three or four. Timeout. Well done by Durant. And, and an excellent use of timeouts in the clock by John Bunting and his staff. Boy, I tell you what, this is a tough thing for a kid just out of high school who was going to the senior prom last spring and now the balance of this football game resting on his shoulders and bill something something very eerie about miami i don't yeah. think you want to go to overtime with no, the game and you don't want to think about the fact that they scored more non-offensive touchdowns in the last four years than anybody in america including the vaunted virginia tech they block kicks and then run them for touchdowns. And all those things, Coach Bunning is being positive with his team, I'm sure, right now, and saying, rather than to point that out, point out, just hang in there, stick your shoulder pads into your protection responsibility. Don't let anybody slip through a crease. But actually, he's not saying anything, is he? <laughs> he's thinking all of that, though, Bill. But this will be a 41-yard attempt. Well, the assistant coach is out there doing his part. What a marvelous job to rally back from a tough stretch for North Carolina to be in this situation. I think we're going to see a timeout here from Miami to ISA. Just, I think you're right. Just They have one left to do that. This will be almost 42 yards. Let's make it 42 yards. And here comes the timeout, as you anticipated, Mr. Norrie. This guy, Barth, by the way, set North Carolina records for field goals in the season when he's in high school. I mean, he is a big-time kicker. And uh, in talking to uh, John Bunny, he said he has tremendous poise, and that may be what we're seeing right now. Well, he doesn't want anybody talking to him. I think what he's saying, I've had so many kickers say that to me. Get these guys away from me, Coach. Everybody wants to talk to me. I don't want to talk to anybody. I know what I'm doing. Just leave me alone. I'll go over here. I'll kick this thing. What have you done with kickers in the past? When you well, I've told them Joe. So I've, I had one kicker named Doug Pelfrey in Kentucky. Great kicker. Kicked for the Bengals for years. We had to get him mad, so I'd call him over and I'd say something. Come on, guys. And Doug would get mad, at it, and he'd go out and kick it 55 yards and right through the middle. So they're all different. I don't think uh, John knows this kid well enough. He hasn't been around. Know what to do with him, probably. Well, I like him. He's smiling. He said, hey, everybody leave me alone. I think that's what he was saying. Well, I think it's, it's, a, it's really kind of ironic that you get great games from the two quarterbacks, Chad Scott, Devin Hester, and the whole game comes down to a true freshman place kicker. 42 yards with four seconds left in the game. Jared Hall will hold Greg Warren. One of their captains will snap the ball. in basketball here at North Carolina. And it's been a long time since they've been able to run onto the football field with a win like that. 
This could be the game and the stretch that could save John Bunning's job with a victory here tonight. Well, Gary, it hasn't been a long time. Yeah, there's the guy. <laughs> there's Roy. It hasn't been a long time. They have never beaten the top five. That's team, right. Ever. So they're going to go to four and four on the year, three and two in the ACC, and Miami has their 10-game winning streak snapped. A major upset. And the really, goalposts are going elsewhere. Really have to take your hat off, David, to John Bunting and his coaching staff and this valiant group of young people. Well, they, they had a great game plan offensively and defensively. Durant had to come up huge. Great work by the offensive line to get Chad Scott openings. Scott capitalized. And this is a Miami team. you got to go all the way back to last year, 12 games ago, and they lost 10-6 to Tennessee. And I gotta say this on behalf of my broadcast partner, David Norrie in the open said this just might end up being a big upset. And I'm sure some folks sitting out in TV land said, yeah, right, David. <laughs> Good call. Well, I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, take the credit, David. <laughs> Just say thank you. <laughs> for, for a moment there after the open, I thought I'd lost my mind. Here it is again from uh, 42 yards. You know what? This guy could run for about any office. The student council, the student body at North Carolina. Let me do one other important thing. Let me point out that Greg Warren was the long snapper and Jared Hall was the holder. The snap was perfect. The hold was perfect. When that happens, you've got a real good chance to make those if you're in the middle of a field. What a drive by North Carolina. They started this drive with their backs against their own goal line. I mean, that is a gutty drive against the number three team in the country. So Miami hoping a different outcome. They wanted to get this into overtime, and Brock Berlin now as a starting quarterback is 17 and three, 16 and three at Miami. He was one and all at the University of Florida, and uh, North Carolina. You look ahead; they play Virginia Tech here. That's their last home game. They go to Wake and Duke. And you never know the impetus of a victory like this. What it could do, and since the ball backed up what he said. He not only said it, and he didn't mean any disrespect. When we visited with him, he made that clear. He said, look, that was taken out of context. All I meant was they don't run a lot of plays, but they run them extremely well, and they're great players. I didn't mean to be disrespectful, but he went out there and went after it. His coach used it as a motivational tool with the team, and you got to have some guys on your side that will stand up and say, hey, we can beat these guys. Well, we're going to have some interviews and some extra coverage of this uh, outstanding game but once again the final score here tonight North Carolina 31 Miami 28 coming up next on ESPN2 NHRA qualifying from Las Vegas and for a full wrap of this game we'll be on ESPN News in just a few minutes this has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports for more on college football log on to ESPN.com your home for college football on the internet Along with the coach, Bill Curry, David Norrie, and Alex Flanagan, I'm Gary Bender. Thanks for watching.